Chat's gonna sign into chat. Cool. Shouldn't you already be signed in if you're? Oh, uh, that's weird. Well, if it's already linked, shouldn't it be? I have no clue. <laughs> I'm gonna figure it out. Yeah, it might be linked to like the Streamlabs, but then you have to also link it to the YouTube. Because you can stream to like Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch from Streamlabs, so you might have to like individually sign in, mm. like up to probably four times. <clears throat> cool. That's us. Whoa, who are those? Those are like tiny little us. Who are those ugly boys? Who invited these tiny little us's? Who are those ugly boys? Oh, a couple of ducklings, huh? A little lost, huh? All alone in this big pond. Um, you could you could take that away, Kev. We don't need to see that. We don't need to see that. I will just be distracted the whole time. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> if that's there, he's not going to focus at all. Yeah, Drew's going to ask me a question. So, I'll be like, thanks. You could take that away, too. Like, we don't need to see any of that. We really don't need to see anything until there's, like, some kind of... I mean, you don't have to unplug it. You just, like... You take my eyes. Yeah, okay. For take sure. my eyes away, dude. Um. Yeah, so we're yeah, live. So. What's up, everybody? So we're just kind of figuring everything out. This is our first... Official, uh, official, I should say, live stream. We've done a couple live streams before. This is the first official live stream in this in this room. Okay, there we go. There in we go. this There's, room, I was like, we'll get there. In these the chairs, first something for sure. With these microphones, mm -hmm. with Kevin manning the station, and he's been tirelessly. Uh, just nagging, just, really. Just really <laughs> just setting everything up. So if there's yeah. any issues at all. If there's any issues at all with the audio, with the video, please let us know now before we get started. And then... Is there a delay we'll on the audio, it. guys? No, but you're surprisingly pink. You are very pink, It's, actually. it's the reflection from the wall, and I don't have a light because I'm the, Bro, the guy Whatever the excuse you got, you look in salmon as hell. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, the, this, this is going to be fun. We're going to do a few segments. So, imagine... Uh, you were just like in the room as we're filming Dickie Dine's show, and that's no, no audio. No audio? Nah, we're... that can't be the case. Oh come on! We're getting trolled already. So imagine you're in the room and you're just watching us. You know, sit, you're just like standing at a wall over there. But you got tape on your mouth. But you got tape on your and mouth a, and a board that you can write stuff on. <laughs> So we're going to do our segments like we would normally film them, but we're just going to do them live. And if you guys have some things that you want to say in chat, we will have little intermissions between our segments. We'll read the super chats. If anyone gives us a super chat, uh, we'll talk to you guys for five or ten minutes between the segments. Other than that, we're just going to do our segments as if we would normally do them. Again, if there's any technical issues, please let us know. So Kevin, who is behind the computer can attempt to fix them um and kevin is figuring it out as he goes kevin so. is actually ai generated <laughs> yeah. he's doing his best he, he only has a certain amount of info that we fed him yeah yeah um yeah bear with us this is probably going to be a shit show but it's fine because it's the dicky dines shit it's show the shit and show. it wouldn't be the dicky dines if it wasn't an absolute the shit shitting show. Dick show the shitting the poo poo penis Stop. show <laughs> <laughs> this summer, the conjuring for the poo poo the penis, shit, the poopy poop man. No. <laughs> the the pee -pee -pee Do I have a USB stick downstairs? Yes. This is your job. <laughs> it's plugged in and it's not working. <laughs> Should have been prepped beforehand. Should have been prepped beforehand. <laughs> so wait, is are we still we're still going? Though, we're still, right? we're like still we're going still going okay. Back Hello. Beforehand. Okay. <laughs> Sorry guys. <laughs> okay. We're new. Uh, who the fuck was that, Austin? Oh, on the phone. Yeah, it was Martha. Good old Martha. Martha. Yeah, Marmar. Okay. Are we are Uncle, we good to Uncle go, Martha, or yeah. are you still figuring you stuff need, out? Can rip it from YouTube. What do you need, Kevin? Need a <laughs> you need a USB <laughs> stick. Yep. I, I I have not used one of those since like 2016, bro. Uh, <laughs> When's the last time you've used a USB <laughs> stick? I'm not even confident in answering what that is. It's like a USB drive, like a like, Oh, what, like a, what a strange name for that. You know, it's like you you like, like for Halloween, drive? you like give them to your friends and yeah, like yeah. check out my mix stick. 
It's fine. It's fair. Yeah. I found one of mine recently from childhood that had like every episode of Naruto on it. <laughs> <laughs> it was like hidden in my GameCube. I was like, this would be the best spot ever. And it was such a good spot. I didn't find it for 20 years. <laughs> 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 and I found you it. I was like oh every episode of Naruto I in your game. Every cube. single episode of Naruto Shippuden oh my uh, on my little thumb drive, and I was like, "Oh my god, I found it!" That's so the funny. Holy Grail. <laughs> the Holy Grail. Wow. Yeah. Every time I find an old thumb drive, I just throw it away because I'm like, "Well, I haven't needed it in about seven years, <laughs> You're right. so I don't think I'm gonna need it in the next." Seven that's what years. happened to that guy that threw away his Bitcoin. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That was only <laughs> it wasn't even oh working. Yeah. Oh. All right, guys, bear with us. We'll get started Wait, here real soon. Kevin is still uh, yeah, honestly, bear with setting us, up. Wolf with us, you know, crane with us, whatever animal you prefer. You know, pigeon, pigeon goose with us. I, I would say the last time I opened my doors to a pigeon, things went south. So. You opened your door to a pigeon? Was it a, a door-to-door it pigeon? <laughs> it was what? <laughs> oh, nice. Classic pigeons going south for winter. Um. Yeah. So. This will be a shit show for a minute. Sorry, guys. It's not going to be. It currently is. But don't blame us. I have this really good Jeff Dunham cause... joke I've been working on. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> so I have this really good Jeff Dunham joke I've been working on. Okay. Okay. <laughs> It's, that was the awkward moment when we were on stage that one time. Oh. That was the joke I was like, I, what are you doing? That was the joke I ruined. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can't. <laughs> Everyone shame Kevin right now. <laughs> if you want us to get started and we're not able to get started, shame Kevin in the chat. Kevin, quit reading the chat and do what you got to do. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I actually, I'm usually so good at like waiting till I'm done drinking. <laughs> oh my god. He's looking through his toolbox. I can't, I he can't hear it. <laughs> oh, me straight up tinkering right now, bro. <laughs> looking for his inspector gadget USB-C. <laughs> go, go, gadget, rifle through duffel bag. <laughs> That's a five eighths, dude. I said, give me a three fourths. <laughs> Wait, why do you even need a USB stick, Kevin? I don't understand. Yeah, why? <laughs> well, th- we don't need eight backups. We need to do our segments. <laughs> you have at least one, right? <laughs> I'm not okay. <laughs> I find it's okay. Everything's out. Okay. Is the audio at least good? Is the video good? Are we. Is there. Is that at least okay? Kevin, I like, okay? I like 37 so backups, so, so we're just oh going to go for it. God, dude. All right, here we go, guys. Okay. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Austin, we need your composure, dude. Compose yourself, <laughs> please. All right. <clears throat> what is up, everybody? Welcome to the Dicky Dines Show. Ooh. Hope you're all having a good day today. Austin just got done crying. I'm a great day. So you know, it is what it is. Just watch the Notebook. You just watch the Notebook. Yeah. So today. Um, I had a fun video idea, and you want to know what that is, Austin? Not if, <laughs> not if it's come fun. Back. Not if it's come fun. Come back to us, please. I can't possibly have one more fun. <laughs> okay. Um, so my idea uh, is I wanted to look up some songs that are really big hits and songs that you may not know are covers. 
Ooh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is going to be a little bit fun. I was surprised in a lot of these as well, because I was like, okay, no, that's their biggest song. Right. And it was a cover of something that was 20 years old. So um, are you ready, Kevin, to I'm, do this? I'm so excited for this. Is Kevin ready? I just saw a short the other day about like this, this topic, and I, it was only like two songs, but I was like, whoa. Shock! Very, very surprised. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited to go down this rabbit hole. I think the, the honestly best, any hole, bro. <laughs> the best part is that like you see who actually wrote the song, and it's like Jim. Ted. <laughs> it's like it's like Ted from Insurance, and you're like, and he has like a hundred Grammys it's, of it's like Jerry. number one platinum selling hits, and it's just like some dude like that likes yeah. barbecue. It's like what the fuck? <laughs> he's, he's, um, it's always like. Just a picture of him, like in the middle of New York, like yeah. just in, on the park bench. It's just yeah. like Jerry. Like, What's up, guys? It's me. <laughs> okay, so number one, uh, Kevin, if you are ready. Uh, so the song 1985 that was made popular by the artist, the the band Bowling for Soup. Okay. Um. Yep. There they are. Nice. So we all, I think we all know this song. In case you don't know this song, Kevin, can you please play a clip of Bowling for Soup's version of? Ni- I thought that picture was AI generated. That's really funny. <laughs> 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 this whole time, I did not know that that was. That's the Bowling band. for Soup. It bro. looks like a fake picture from here. It's so okay, Austin, uh, and everyone in the in the chat in the comments, uh, do you have any idea who actually wrote that song? Because it was not Bowling for Soup. Which surprised me, because that's, like, their biggest song. Yeah, that's a bummer for them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't even have a guess of, of who that would be the original of. Okay. Who, who is it? So, the original writer I have never even heard of. It is a band called SR71. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely wanted to guess yeah. that. Yeah, okay. And so apparently the story is that SR71 and Bowling for Soup were good friends, essentially. They were like buddies, buddy bands. And SR71 wrote the song, and they basically said, like, yeah, you guys, like, take it, cover it, like, do the song or whatever. Because at the time, Bowling for Soup was way bigger, mm-hmm. and they knew the song was good. But they knew they weren't big enough to make it like, like pop off. Like kind of. pop off. They didn't have like maybe the label backing, whatever like reason the it was. Traction to get it rolling. So they kind of said, "Yeah, you guys do this song, and then like we'll just take the royalties from it, <laughs> which is a good deal, I think." That's a pretty smart move. Um, and so yeah, so damn, that's awesome. Kevin, can you please play us the original uh, recording of 1985 by SR71? Also, I cannot hear anything. And chat, if you can, if you can hear this, let us know. This is the original. This is okay. Okay, yeah. So you might not even have noticed. Yeah, whoa. Yeah, that is how similar it was. They even sang the same. Yeah. Yeah. It is, so it's literally almost the exact same song with a different that's a tr- singer. It's a trip. Yeah. But yeah, SR seventy one, and uh, let us know if you can not hear that song in chat. Uh, we want to make sure you guys can hear that as well. But yeah, so nineteen eighty five, uh, Bowling for Soup, written by SR seventy one, and those are the differences right there. What a trip! Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, it's literally said. I've, usually the covers are like, oh, this is so different with yeah. a different voice, but it's like. You have to like. <laughs> you're like, wait, what? Like the the SR seventy one singer is a little bit more like higher pitched mm-hmm. maybe slightly more nasalier but other than that it sounds like the same song that's a trip that's so great start great start. okay uh moving on um so this is an older song uh made popular by the band heart uh which is a great band my my dad introduced me to heart way back when um yep there it is and uh i'm sure you all have heard this song but just in case you haven't kevin please play them a clip of Hearts version of <laughs> copyright seconds. claim. Okay, so that song was not written by Heart. Actually, do you have any idea who wrote that song? Um, well, I don't know, Rick Astley. <laughs> <laughs> Never gonna leave you alone. Uh, no, no, that would be really funny. No, I'm shucks. Okay, so uh, you will never guess it. By the way, it, it is a uh, a duo group 
named I-10, but specifically a guy named Billy Steinberg. Um, so, yeah, this is the guy. Look at it. <laughs> Billy Steinberg. <laughs> this is exactly yeah. what we were talking okay. about. The yeah, Frodo right? in New York are just like... Yeah, dude, right? So love. this guy is responsible for like half of the songs that were huge in the 80s. That's pretty funny. And the other half of the songs that were huge in the 80s were a, one other different guy that looked exactly like him. Yeah. So this yeah, getting guy... getting older is just realizing this information. There's, there's, there's three <laughs> dudes that did everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everything's alive. That's literally every genre, dude. Like, like, well, not every genre, but like metalcore. You have like Adam D and like Joey Sturgis and like... And my mom. She's like, <laughs> like a couple other dudes. But they like wrote... Like if you go back to like Adam D's discography, mm-hmm. he did everything yeah like he did devil Wars Prada, on he did unearth <laughs> he did obviously kill switch he did as i lay dying he did so many bands um anyway so yeah i10 which i believe was a duo group so it was technically two people but specifically billy steinberg is like the songwriter guy mm-hmm. right uh kevin can you please play the original i10 it's like, they're, like their biggest song i was like version. that for sure has to be hard but no it's uh I ten. Um. So there you go. Yeah, we're la- lame name. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's why I never popped off. Oh me. I ten. I ten. I don't know yeah. how old you are, but me. I ten. I ten. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Uh. Next. Uh. Song is. Uh. Not as old, but definitely a little bit older. So. Um. The song behind blue eyes. Now this song was made popular by mostly Limp Biscuit. Yeah, there true. he is, yeah. Mr. Dirsty Mr. Boy. Um, Mr. Biscuit. <laughs> Mr. Biscuit. Uh, great song. Love this song. Uh, I'm sure you all have heard it. Kevin, please play a clip just in case they have not. Pine Blue Eyes, Limp Biscuit. Um, that's the version I grew up listening to that I knew. Now, if you're maybe a little bit older in chat, mm-hmm. you might know that was not written by Limp Biscuit. I feel like this one is more popular. More people know this mm-hmm. one was not yeah, I feel like recently, written by Limp Biscuit. Um, do you know who wrote this song, Austin? This is the Who. I do know this. The Who. who. I yes. Do, I do. This is like probably the only one I'm gonna know. <laughs> Correct, Austin. It is the Who. Um, and Kevin, can you play a clip of the original version, please? This one to me is more like just a guy sitting around a campfire singing Very a melancholy, song. Melancholy, you yeah. know. Whereas like the Limp Bizkit one is like obviously way more produced and more, you know, mm-hmm. sounding yeah. professional. But if yeah, yeah. I, I, th- I really like the Limp Bizkit one. That's like probably the best like Fred Durst has sounded singing on a song. Oh, it's great! It's great! I love it. So yeah, um, Behind Blue Eyes, The Who. Okay, this one surprised me. Uh, it's another song. I believe it's from like the mid '80s. I don't know exactly. The uh, mid '80s, bro. The mid '80s, great, great uh, decade, by the way. So, the song is called "Come On, Feel the Noise," and you might think it was written by the band Quiet Riot, who popularized it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Kevin, can you play Quiet Riot's version? Oh, please. Of Come On, Feel the Noise for the boys. All right. So that's quiet. (laughs) (laughs) Just in case you want it one more time. All right. So that's Quiet Riot's rendition of Come On, Feel the Noise. Austin, do you know who wrote Come On, Feel the Noise? Uh, No. uh, Hold on. Let me get... uh, John Bloomberg. <laughs> <laughs> Close. No. Um, so this song was written by a band called Slade. Slade? S-L-A-D-E. So I wonder if that's a comic book reference. Slade. There they are. And yeah, Kevin, can you play the audio clip of Slade's original Don't version? Do it. Come on, on feel the noise. noise. It's essentially the wow. same. It's like the same song and the same recording just 10 years earlier. Right. Yeah. Because the only real difference is like the production, the production of like the huge snare drum, the, yeah. the, the audio kind of, it, it sounds like, uh, like you're just outside of a wedding venue. Yeah. <laughs> you're right. like, I know that song. It's like, like wait, that's a, that's a good cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that song. <laughs> so yeah, that's the original version written by the band Slade. Not Slater. Not too much of a difference. Like I said, it just sounds ten years older than uh, than Quiet Riots, which is forty years old. So it's like, 
Yeah, an older song. But Times uh, that by twenty. You could... <laughs> that one I didn't know. I, I thought for sure Quiet Riot wrote that song. Um, okay, yeah, I didn't know that. Moving on. This one I think more people are going to know uh, who wrote the song and it, that, that it's a cover. Um, the song Hurt. So when I first heard this song, I for sure thought it was written by Johnny Cash because I was like, Johnny Cash is like a hundred years old. <laughs> Like there and like there's it's for sure him like this song had to have just been written by him like a thousand years ago. Um, Kevin, can you play like a clip of the Johnny Cash version of the song Hurt? One, I think this is my favorite. Yeah, Yeah. this song fucks. I for sure thought this was the original. Yeah, I'm just now learning it. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) I for sure thought he made this song. Yeah. So I I still think that's that's probably. Maybe the best version? I don't know. It's it's up there. I thought it was for sure Johnny Cash that wrote it. There is also someone else who covered this song, um, and I have a live version clip of it because I don't know if he actually recorded a version of it, Just but he it did perform it live. Okay. And that person is David Bowie, and oh. he performed this song um, multiple times. Kevin, can you... Please play a live version clip of David Bowie performing the song Hurt. Mr. Bowie. It sounds fucking cool, I think. He's got such a, like, ghost vibrato. Oh, it's so sick, dude. I love his voice. This is done. This is a, su- I mean, it is a super Bowie version in very on brand. Okay, so uh, oh, I want to hear the pickup. That the, yeah, <laughs> right. Right. Well, you got to go listen to the rest of it. It's on, it's on YouTube. Um, that's where I got the clip from. I couldn't find it on like Apple Music or or Spotify, so uh, maybe it's there. I just didn't find it, so I got it from YouTube. You can go find a live version of David Bowie performing. This is a great, great version, and the quality is awesome. So, Austin, do you know who wrote the song "Hurt"? I forgot. There was another layer to this. Uh, who? Yeah, I don't know who. The people that wrote "Paint It Black," <laughs> <laughs> Rolling Stones. Yeah. Like that. Well, they probably Whoever, didn't even write yeah. that song. It's someone else. <laughs> um, so that song "Hurt," and I think most people probably in chat know this, was written by Trent Reznor, Nine Inch Nails. Oh whoa! Yes. Just, wait, just him by himself? So, he like soloed this. So yeah, he wrote the song "Hurt" and Johnny Cash covered it. Now. That's ins- that's so fucking cool, by the way. It's also, uh, I was reading into it, and Trent Reznor said one of the highlights of his life slash career was standing side stage watching David Bowie perform his song, Hurt. That's pretty cool. Which is, like, that's, so that's, sick. That's pretty nuts. But I for sure Mission fulfilled. thought Johnny Cash wrote it and Nine Inch Nails covered it. That just made sense in my head. Yeah, I, do you have the Nine Inch version? Um, Yes. Can, uh, that's pretty sick. That's the original version. And then, yeah, covered by... Well, well, so many people well, have covered this I'm song. I'm surprised I didn't know that one. But, like, really big names like Johnny Cash and David Bowie covered it. But, yeah, I thought for sure it was Johnny Cash. But, yeah, so Hurt, <laughs> written by Nine Inch Nails. That's um, awesome, dude. That's crazy. Johnny Cash and David Bowie covered your song. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty nuts. And you write industrial music. Right. You know what I mean? That's just, like, the cool thing about music. Like, you can literally just transcend genres like that. Beautiful. A, so- a good song is a good song. Okay, moving on. The next one shocked me, okay? I first... For sure was like no that's who wrote it it is not you like fact check yourself three times yeah for sure um so i think we all know this song if you know you're older than 15 <laughs> i love rock and roll i love oh, yeah. rock and roll so it was not written by joan jett which is it's like the one everyone knows yes yep. of course kevin can you please play the yeah so she did not they did not write that song um, another person who covered this song uh, <laughs> is uh, Britney Spears. Oh, wait, really? Yes, Kevin. Can you please play the what's from the movie Crossroads? Oh, so, oh, okay. So yeah, so they both did not interesting write that song. Do you know who did write that song? Uh, the hmm, let's see here. It was it. 
Pearl Jam. <laughs> <laughs> I love 90s grunge. Uh, no, it was not Pearl Jam. Shoot, um, shoot. So it was written by a band called The Arrows. The Arrows. I don't think I'm familiar. Yeah, no. Uh, Kevin, can you please play the original version of the song by The Arrows? <laughs> Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I that's, was, I it blew my mind. That's funny. I was like, there is no way Joan Jet that is not their song. It is. It's weird how many of these have like the karaoke effect where I'm like, I've heard the cover so much that when I hear the original, I, I just sounds like, oh, this is like some guy covering that song. Yeah. I know. and it's like, no, this yeah. is the one that made it. No, a, that is the it's original. Trip. It's crazy. Yeah, weird. Um. Okay, moving on. Another one that destroyed my existence because I was like, no, the, the, what, what do you mean? I never knew this. Uh, this is not a rock song, but it is a massively huge, huge like song. Like, will always be. Giga big. One of the songs that are just transcending the universe. So you all know the song, I'm sure, I Will Always Love You. Whitney Hugh. Whitney Houston did not write that song. Did you know that? I did know you that. Did I, know I that? yeah, I I found that out this year actually. Dude. <laughs> Earlier this that year. I blew, blew my mind. I couldn't believe it. The, it yeah, and the original version's like fucking tight too. Okay. I was I was very surprised. Kevin, can you please play a clip of Whitney Houston's version of I Will Always Love You? I'm sure we all know. <laughs> Okay. So that... <laughs> So that song was not written by Whitney Houston. Do you know Austin? I'm, you, I I'm assuming do. you do know who. Okay, who wrote that song? Dolly Parton. Dolly freaking Parton wrote yeah, nice. that song. Yeah, uh, my Glee idol. Hell yeah. She was in Glee. She was awesome. Yeah, she's sick. Kevin, can you please play <laughs> the original Dolly Parton verse? It's just Wild, crazy. Yeah. I was like chicken who has no butthole and farts. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what happened? Yeah, I was. He exploded. Yeah, I did not know that, but I was like, okay. Yeah, Dolly tight. Parton. Hell yeah. Cool discovery. Okay, um, this next one uh, shocked me. Also, I, I'm just like finding out so many things that I thought were real were not real. So, do you know the movie Shrek? Yeah. Okay, I'm assuming you do. <laughs> do you know the song? What's it about? <laughs> <laughs> Well, hold on. I think I might have an idea. What, can you? What is it? What's the main plot line? Um, so a big guy follows a donkey around. Um, so there's a song from Shrek uh, called "I'm a Believer." Oh that yeah. I saw her face. <laughs> now I'm a believer. <laughs> so Smash Mouth performed mm -hmm. that song, uh, which was in that movie. Uh, Kevin, can you please play Smath's, Smash Mouth's version of I'm a Believer? Yeah. Haunted all my dream. Okay, so that song was not written by Smash Mouth. Was it? Do you know who wrote the song? No. Do you have a guess? Ooh, a guess? I'd be funny if it was Smashing Pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> Both smashing, huh? Uh, smashing. No, it was not Smashing Pumpkins. It was written by Neil freaking Diamond. Oh, really? Neil Diamond wrote that song. And what? it was, he. I, I believe he like gave it to the monkeys or like wrote it with or for the monkeys. But there's two versions. So, Kevin, can you play the, uh, the monkeys version of I'm a Believer? So that's Monkey's version of uh, I'm a Believer, and the original version uh, of Neil Diamond, Kevin... Neil Diamond. <laughs> Neil Diamond wrote the song in Shrek, performed by Smash Mouth. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I like how... I feel like uh, Smash Mouth really made it a lot more jolly of a song. Yeah. Like, like you said, it becomes yeah, like a summer right. vibe one. I like think the way he sings it, it up he a sounds bit. like... He's, uh, Mr. Smash. Mr. Mouth. Mr. Mouth. Okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, so next, 
we have a song made popular in the early 2000s by a group known as No Doubt. No Doubt. Uh, the singer of that group, of course, is Gwen Stefani. And the song, which is probably one of their biggest, I think, in the, at the time, was call, it's called It's My Life. Kevin, can you play the No Doubt? Okay. So that song was not written by the group No Doubt. Do you know... Austin or Chat, who wrote the song It's My Life? And don't Google it. Do you know who wrote that song? Uh, Yes, Conviction. Yes, Conviction? Yeah. No. Uh, that is not correct. The writer of that song is a group called Talk Talk. It looks like another AI-generated image also. Um, yes, the group called Talk Talk. Can you, Kevin, please play the <laughs> clip from their original version, It's My Life? I, I Probably a movie, I think. Yeah. Like an older movie. Yeah. yeah. Because I've definitely heard that maybe like twice or even a couple, even more possibly. Even more than <laughs> twice. Maybe Imagine more than that. twice. That's crazy. Okay. Yeah. Talk Talk. I feel like that's something you'd hear walking through J.C. JCPenney's when you were younger. <laughs> or in like, <laughs> a, in like a, some 80s rendition, like Stranger Things. Oh, well, yeah. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. running up the hill. It's my. They would like play use that or something. Okay. So yeah, written by a group called Talk Talk. So this next one is uh, covered by a uh, rock band or I guess depending who you ask a uh, metal band uh, disturbed uh, ooh wah, ah, ah, ah. Oh, oh. yeah <laughs> so the song uh, is called Land of Confusion and I feel like a oh, lot of yeah, people yeah. probably do know this one as a cover but Kevin can you please play a clip great cover by the way I love this cover <laughs> All right, Kevin, that's good. Um, so, yeah, that's Land of Confusion by Disturbed. Do you know who wrote the song, Austin? That would be Genesis <laughs> and <laughs> Philip Collins. Philip, <laughs> Philip Collins. <laughs> yes, that would be Philip Collinius. The universe tried to stop me from my yes. horrible joke. <laughs> Philip. Uh, correct, Austin. <laughs> Kevin, can you please play the original Genesis recording? The Genesis original. So, Phil Collins, by the way, is like one of the most successful recording artists of all time. Yeah. Which I wouldn't have known that. I, I guess it's not my generation, but he massively, Genesis. massively uh, successful. Uh, yeah, his songwriter, is, artist. He's performer. like the one, like the blue names on Wikipedia where you'll you'll click his name and it's like yeah, you're like whoa, yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> Look at all this royalty. Yeah, Phil Collins, man. Uh, so yeah, um, moving on. Uh, this next one was covered by uh, a lot of artists, but mostly made popular by a few. Uh, one of them being the the Dixie Chicks, which are now just called the Chicks. Um, and I was really hoping it was the other way. <laughs> the Dixies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kevin, can you please play the Dixie Chick version of the song Landslide? That's good, Kevin. So that is uh, the Chick's version of Landslide. It's such a good song, right? Such a good song. Okay, it was also covered... <laughs> I actually love this cover. It sounds kind of silly, but I love this cover. Uh, Smashing Pumpkins also did a recorded okay. cover of this song. Kevin, can you please play okay. the Smashing Pumpkins version of Landslide? So I Cheering. really, honestly, I believe some songs are meant to be stripped down like that mm -hmm. to just like a guitar. Because yeah. like the accompaniment of just that like kind of finger plucked guitar is so much better than like a banjo, a mandolin, a couple acoustics, and they're all just kind of like doing shit. It's mm -hmm. like just one guitar with the voice. Oh, it's so good. So neither of those uh, groups wrote Landslide. Uh, do you know who wrote the song originally called Landslide? Uh, the dudes. The dudes. <laughs> the Dixie dudes. Now just the dudes. No, it was written by Fleetwood Mac and sung oh. by the beautiful Stevie Nicks. Kevin, can you please okay. play? So nice. Very pleasant. All right, Kevin. Thank you. you so, oh, dude, it's such a good song, <laughs> yeah, right? Like, I love that fucking song. Like, if if any song that's not metal were to be like my. Yeah. Guilty pleasure, that's up there for sure. I it's, love it's like the embodiment of like somber. You're yeah. just like, yeah. 
that so the original and the Smashing Pumpkins, those two versions. I'm I don't really like the Chicks version too much. I think it's too busy. I think it's too like too produced sounding. Mm-hmm. Whereas the other two are like just song. raw and real and just so good. Yeah. Um. So yeah, landslide written by Fleetwood Mac. Uh. Okay. Let's move on. So there's a few more here of this segment. The next song is an old one, but I think we all know it. Uh, it was covered by very popular singer Aretha Franklin, and the song is called R E S P E C T. Respect song was not was not written by Aretha Franklin. Austin, do you know who wrote Respect? Uh, yeah, it was fucking ACDC. <laughs> I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure. <laughs> that would be a song that a really short guy would sing. <laughs> that would definitely be a song that a short guy would write. Right. Respect me. <laughs> um, yeah. So no, it was. <laughs> I really wish it was ACDC. <laughs> Holy shit! AI, get on it. Get on okay. It. Oh yeah, we can do that now, dude. <laughs> AI, let's go. Okay. So the the, <laughs> the writer uh, of the song is uh, another artist named Otis Redding. Have you ever heard of Otis Redding? He he was also an old school singer. I don't think uh, so. Same time period. Uh, can you please play the original version? <laughs> of uh, of is real shit. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go to Sunday church, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So one thing that I found interesting uh, is that in the original version, he never does the part that goes, R-E-S-P-E-C-T. She added that in her cover. That was never in the original song. The oh, only line that he says in the song is like, "Woman, I'm gonna give you my money." Just yeah. like that's all the one line. He's just like, "I wrote this for you, babe." No, yeah, the line is literally, "I'm gonna give you my money." It's, it's like I slightly mm. paraphrased, but it's like, "I'm gonna give you my money. All I want is for you to show me respect." And then it goes into that. Yeah, I think that's a haiku from the Seven Rings. <laughs> <book>. <laughs> so yeah, Aretha Franklin added in the most popular part of that song of the R E S P E C D. Yeah, this is that was a that was a great cover. That was one of the better. Oh yeah, that so one's good. Infamous. Um, okay. Not infamous, but famous. <laughs> the most infamous. Yeah, I don't know why I said infamous. Most infamous. Uh, respect okay. from a woman. How? <laughs> <laughs> the next song. Uh, this one was covered by quite a lot of fucking artists, but most famously by these few that I have selected. So, uh, the song is called Tainted Love. Now, um, the first person to cover this that I have pulled... Yep, Kevin, thank you, uh, is a group called Soft Cell. Can you please play the audio clip of Soft Cell's version of Tainted Love? Very popular version. Such a good song, also. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Um, and then it was also covered by Mr. Marilyn Manson. Mr. Monsoon. Can you please play that version as well? Yeah. By Ed Cobb. I sh- I was, that was That's Gloria second. Jones. That was almost. <laughs> Very close. <laughs> Very close, Kevin. Ed Cobb was. Ed Cobb, there, uh, no, there. Pull Ed Cobb, Kevin, pull up. <laughs> Ed Cobb is in the pull folder. The, the I put it in there. He, so okay, that's fine. You can you can leave Gloria Jones. Okay, so it was written by. The picture I have for Ed Cobb is amazing, by the way, because it is just an His old. Drag looks great. It is just an old white guy surrounded in platinum records. <laughs> Like, he's got, like, a hundred of them just, like, lined up all on him. What's his name again? Um, His name is Ed Cobb, C-O-B-B. Now, the reason Gloria Jones popped up is because (laughs) it was originally performed by Gloria Jones and written by Ed Cobb, and it was kind of like an Ed Cobb-Gloria Jones thing, uh, which was back in, like, the 50s mm-hmm. and the 60s. They should have named it Glorious Cobb. Glorious <laughs> Cobb, yes. Um, Kevin, can you please play the Gloria Jones-Ed Cobb version, the original version of Tainted Love? Whoa. Right? 
This is a, have you this, have you ever seen the movie Under the Silver Lake? No, I don't think so. Oh my god, you should if you have time you should watch that movie. It's amazing. But yeah, there's a a moment kind of with the musical stuff of like a guy basically being like, "Name any song, I wrote it, buddy." Oh, and he's, yeah. like, he's just playing on the piano, Dude. and it's like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> it's crazy that like when you actually look at the credits of who writes super popular songs, mm-hmm. it's like five guys, <laughs> yeah, and not the burger joint. <laughs> it's it's like literally everything. just like five dudes you've never fucking heard of, mm-hmm. and they wrote all the songs you ever grew up listening to, like. Like Benny Blanco mm-hmm. has written like a thousand like Billboard charting songs, right? Like people like that. It's just like, oh my god, it's pretty um, wild. So yeah. Anyways, maybe in post, Kevin, if you can find a picture of Ed Cobb, that's fine. We don't have to do it right yeah, this second. It got thrown up live. You did it. Yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah, he's just this fucking white old guy with surrounded in records, and it's like, okay, uh, yeah. So he he wrote <laughs> yeah. a lot of songs. Okay, last one for this segment. Uh, this song was made popular by the uh, underground band known as Metallica. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll show you their music one day. You'll, you'll like them. So the song is called Whiskey in the Jar. Kevin, can you please play Metallica's version of Whiskey in the Jar? I feel like a lot of people probably know this song is a cover. Joe. Joe. Okay, cool. Thank Joe. you, Kevin. Now, do you know who originally wrote that song, Austin or Chat? Do you know? Uh, I think Lizzie McGuire. Lizzie McGuire? Yeah. You know what's really funny? What? Thin Lizzie. Who is Thin Lizzy? You've never heard of Thin Lizzy? No. Really? <laughs> no, I don't know. Uh, Thin Glizzy, I'll tell you about that all day. <laughs> so Thin Lizzy is a, an old rock band from like the 60s and 70s around that time. <laughs> Sounds um, pretty close. Th- did you have any idea? You just said yeah. Lizzie McGuire? Lizzie McGuire just fell right. Okay, well, Thin Lizzy, yeah. <laughs> uh, can you please play the original version written by Thin Lizzy? Kevin, yeah. Interesting. So, so that song was written by, uh, by Thin Lizzy. Now, that's all that I have uh, collected for everyone today. Huh. There are so many songs. Mm-hmm. When I was like picking out songs, I was just like shocked oh, at the, all the songs that are huge mm-hmm. that are covers. Like, wait the fucking hold on. And you know what's the craziest <laughs> thing is even if the artist like wrote the song, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It usually was not written by the artist. It was written right, by, by like a ghost some or something. dude yeah. or some girl somewhere Ed that Korn just like or whatever his name was. Like, like what's that? Mr. Corn. Mr. Cobb. Cobb. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Mr. Corn on the Cobb. <laughs> yeah, it was just like someone, like a producer, wrote it and just gave it to someone. So that's hilarious. We had uh, somebody wild. chime in and say it's actually an old Irish folk song. Is it an old Irish folk song? Which okay. one? Which song? The last one. That... Yep. So there you go. It's even older that's than Thin Lizzy. So the only the only record of it I could find. The oldest record that I just could find in like ten minutes was Thin Lizzy, but yeah. So apparently it's an it's an old Irish well, song. Um, you know, imagine. But like, think of like how many songs are written like a hundred years ago that people mm-hmm. are like Amazing Grace. Right. You have to just take, like who you have wrote to take Amazing somebody, Grace. Does anyone word. know who wrote that song? The, I have no idea. It was the guy that wrote the birthday song. Sadly, <laughs> dude, who wrote the birthday song? <laughs> exactly. Who wrote that song? Someone should deep dive this shit. I'm sure you can just Google it and find out. But no, there, that one's you can't. That one's unknown. Really? No, the birthday song specifically is like untraceable. Oh my god, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, I have no idea. Uh, what, what's was I had another song in my head too. Oh, do you know that Pave Paradise song? No. The Pave Paradise and put up a parking lot. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one's that one's the bigger one. Is like the. What are they called? The crows or the ravens? The, cr- like the ravens. I don't remember Dude, their name. The crows. Black crows? Mm, no, they're like a. I don't know. They're like an indie rock band. So I hope that. I'm there's... sure Chad knows exactly what I'm talking about. But it was by uh, some woman who did the original on acoustic, and it was like such a sick version. The acoustic one is the only one I knew, and then I heard the other one later in life. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, what a yeah. trip. Yeah. So there you go. Songs that you may not have known. Our covers, uh, yeah, there it is. So anyways, thank you guys for watching that segment. Now, we're going to take a little five-minute moment to to hang out with you guys for a little bit. Say hi to chat. Hello. Dingle. Hello, chat. How's it going? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Mm. Um, mm. It, if there are any, uh, any super chats or anything like that, Kevin, please let us know so we can address them and interact with chat. If not, that's totally fine. Um, and just wanted to take a moment to let you guys know that we do have merch. 
Uh, did we make a description link for this live video, Kevin, with the with the merch and stuff like that? If not, um, we can just add it or whatever. But we do have merch. There there should be a link in the description. If not, we will add it there or put it in chat. We also have a Patreon. And if you want to get, like, your name on the wall, which is, like, the coolest thing ever, right? I mean, everyone wants your dude, name, their name on a wall. My mom's not even on that fucking wall, His dude. mom's not even on the wall, dude. She, yeah, she lives um, up there, though. She's Big Shark 69 or whatever. She's Big Shark 69, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You do have some chats okay uh yeah uh, kevin if you could uh, read the super chats for us so we can make sure that we don't miss anything do a weed video <laughs> <laughs> what's what do we got kevin i can't really read it we got Gotti slaps for five dollars said please do more shocking reddit confessions okay you're both my dad oh yeah more shocking yeah i'm down well, i'm down we're, we're down to raise this kid we're about yeah. <laughs> Gotti socks what was his name Gotti slaps. Gotti slaps. Gotti slaps. <laughs> we got quinn moody for five dollars said you guys got me through some shit Got me through my shit high school. Oh, hell yeah. Love from Oregon. Thank you so Yo. much for the five quid me. I didn't get through you. high school and my Thank reading comprehension is awful. So Thank you so much for that. I Yo, appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Years at? Gotti again with the two bucks said, do, do, do we video. video. Dude, Austin, do you remember that guy from way back on YouTube? Custom Grow 420? Yes! What happened to him? Oh, he got banned when they weren't allowing weed on YouTube, but now oh, they are no. allowing it, but his channel was banned during that period, so it's and gone. he just stopped? Yeah, he just didn't want to come oh, back because he dedicated God. so much time to it and was Dude. like, well, what if it gets Custom deleted Grow again? What is going on? 25 minute long intro. Oh, man, I forgot about the, about him. All right, uh, what else we got there, Kevin? Got Jason Abernathy for two dollars. Says the cover you have always wanted to cover. I don't know what context. The song that's in. you have always wanted to cover? Question mark. What song have you always wanted to cover, Austin? I feel like you would probably just do it, right? If you always wanted to. <laughs> yeah, I, we did a. We covered "I'm So Sick" by Flyleaf, my last band, which is that that's was, a good that one. Kind of, I've always wanted to do like a Flyleaf oh, version. That was a lot of fun. I have an answer for this, mm. and I want to do it. With Scion, with Howard Jones. Ooh, what, what is it? You want to know what? You, wanna, you know what? So it'd be so sick to hear Howard do this song. I've been wanting to do this for um, like Holy Diver. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> the so I, I play that funky music, dude. <laughs> Yo, it's so, like a metal version. Don't 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 bang bang bang. And Howard just like yeah, yeah, <laughs> Dude, you know he would fucking kill it, dude. <laughs> I, would I have also asked him. Love to hear Howard I was like, it. Howard, can we please cover, play that funky music, white boy? And he was like, fuck yeah. He's into it. Now, he would, he, dude, he was so down. And I, I've been wanting to do that song for like four years. The whole video is you're like shirtless behind a DJ. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Guitar. He would kill it. <laughs> All right, Kevin, uh, what else do we got? We got a thumbs up from. Mongolius. Mongolius. Thank you so okay. much for the thumbs up. Appreciate big, you. For $2. Comment, for $2. Bro. Thank you. What is your pay, uh, personal favorite Disney song? Disney song. Ooh. Oh, From Rage Mage. I, I love that question, first what, of all. What's the song that we did? Uh, the Disney, uh, the Frozen 2, not the first, not Let It Go. Uh, it was uh, the, Into the Unknown. Into the Unknown. That's a really yeah. good one. Um, <clears throat> what about you? I'm going to think. Uh, mm. I'm a big fan of Make a Man Out of You from Mulan. Okay. That's uh, a good one. I love that one. Same with uh, reflection from that one. Uh, oh, the fucking what's that song? The what's the that? Hell, Hellfire from uh, do you know what's the Notre Dame? The uh, Hunchback of Notre Dame. I don't know that one. That song is a good, well written song. What's the colors? Colors of the wind. What's that one? That one's oh, yeah, really yeah, good. Yeah, Pocahontas. Yeah, all the colors, colors of, of the wind. wind. That's a good one. Classic. Oh, there's so many songs, dude. Yeah, Disney. I'm trying Damn. to think of a newer age one that I felt. Oh, dude, honestly, uh, we don't talk about Bruno. That song fucks. I was Bruno. Uh, yeah, from Encanto. Oh, okay. Yeah, that song's tight. I like. Uh, I love when songs will have like two like vocal rhythms going on at the okay, same time. Yeah. You know, and Emery they, used to do that shit all the uh, time. It's, it's a, yeah. It's a, it was such like an emo like yeah. post hardcore thing, and they have like four verses that they sing throughout where each character sings, and at the end they all do their parts at the same time, but it has the main hook going on, okay. and it's like if you you can pick out your favorite like melody, and they're all like meshing together. It's so tight. I love it. Hell yeah. Very very much. That's awesome. All right, what do we got, uh, Kevin? We actually had a comment in chat I saw from Evil Skittles said <laughs> Howard would rip a dab and flawlessly cover that song. Yes. <laughs> yes, he would. Yes, That's Mr. Beautiful. Skittles. All one take. I want to do it so this, bad. That would break the internet. That would be beautiful. Dude, I, I, I'm going to make it happen. The second <laughs> record. I'm like, I'm like over halfway through writing it. 
I'm gonna we're gonna do it. I'm gonna <laughs> fucking make it happen, dude. I've been wanting to do that song with Howard literally for like four years. That's good. And That's the awesome. fact that I asked him and he was like Hell yeah, dude. Let's, let's do, do it. it. I would love to do that song. Just like That's yeah. So sick. For sure. <laughs> How um, cool. All okay, right. Uh what let's keep going. There's some more super chats here. We, we got, got Jason Abernathy with Pantera from the Future. Not sure what Pantera that's in regards the, to. I was probably referring to something uh something Pantera else we were talking about. Thank you for the two dollars, Jason. Appreciate, Appreciate you. <laughs> Carl says, Austin, do stand up. Do stand up. I'm sitting. Yeah, see, I, I think the thing that we've discovered with mm-hmm. Austin is that he he is like the funniest person in real life, unprompted, you will ever meet. If you put pressure on him and be like, poke him, like, like be funny, funny, then it, it, it's it's a it's, little bit yeah. uncomfortable for you, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's cause, yeah cause, I don't know, because yeah, it's supposed to come out. Because I, I just be saying jokes all the time, but yeah. then when somebody's like, say a joke, I'm like... If you just wait two uh, seconds, I'll say one. But now, yeah. like, now you're trying to force one. It's like when you ask someone, "Hey, can you name uh, three songs of Led you're Zeppelin?" Like, uh, and you're just like, "I could name like 50, but now that you asked me, uh, immigrant song." Yeah, if I ever did stand up, there would be no script, and I would just be like, "What do you do? Tell me about what you do." <laughs> I'm gonna make fun of it. I, I still think Drusif should actually go out and Drusif do it. would be a really, oh, a, really good what a comedian. Thought, Kevin, did you just think of that? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right, well, no, Kevin, Drusif fucking killed it. Oh, uh, what else show. do we got here, Kevin? We got such as a picture of me naked. <laughs> Jason Abernathy again. Gotten yo no. Gotten you no. Jason's drinking that good shit tonight. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Jason. Two dollars. Did you just curse him? Gotten you no. Gotten you no. Got Jamie Ruiz. Ruiz. It said, "Yo, what up, boys? Hope y'all are good. What up, you dude? boys? Fuck with peeling flesh. Peeling, peeling flesh. flesh. Yeah. I usually sick. go to the doctor when I have that problem. <laughs> yeah, do you guys Thank you so much for the. Fuck with <laughs> you guys like having necrosis? <laughs> do you guys fuck with necrosis? <laughs> Which are both probably bands. Are you, you're right. Necrosis, I'm sure, is a band. Oh, for sure, it's a band. I've yeah. heard that name before. Do you fuck with necrosis too? If someone asked me that, that I would funny. just be like, "What?" Oh yeah, Peeling Flesh is sick. They're the other half of uh, Orphan. They they all came from the band Strangled. Mm. Strangled broke up and then made Orphan and Peeling Flesh. Damn. Okay. Yeah, yeah, peeling okay. orphan Good flesh. To know. Good to know. <laughs> we got love you guys, Dickie. Do you still enjoy cooking after dining with Dickie? Yeah, actually, that kind of gateway me into liking cooking. Yeah, in hindsight, you're a pretty good yeah, cook. I love to cook. Yeah, I've, I've gotten pretty decent at it. Uh, yeah, no, it didn't make me hate it. It made me like it a lot more. Actually. And you know, surprisingly, most of the stuff, even though it looked disgusting on dining with Dickie, was mm-hmm. really good. Yeah, there's only a couple things that were like uneatable, like the candy burrito. Yeah, like that just did not work out. Yeah. But like, <laughs> like things like uh, like fruit nachos, surprisingly okay, not that bad. The four loco soup was not bad until we drowned it in four loco. <laughs> There was a few things that were pretty decent. Or that one thing I made that I just was like, would have been good if the bread wasn't raw. The, oh. the dough was like raw as fuck in the middle. I just had this like realization of how many videos we made by just sitting around and shooting vodka. <laughs> God, dude, that... We just were like, hey, that'd be so funny. Let's do <laughs> it. We did that apart when you were at the two story apartment. We did that a lot. Dude, we did that the... all the time. <laughs> we oh did, we literally did the vodka challenge. We just blended vodka with a bunch <laughs> of stuff and just threw up and drank vodka on camera let's put mayonnaise and vodka and cheetos <laughs> oh and surprisingly it's disgusting <laughs> i can't believe i didn't go together with the oreos <laughs> <laughs> mayonnaise and vodka should be good why isn't it good we, we have a whole outdoor kitchen at my house too oh now God. we just got a pizza oven so i want to bring austin over to do a full uh, <laughs> vodka, pizza? Yeah. Like, vodka pizza i'm gonna make the most beautiful decadent pizza and then we're gonna blend it up and shoot it <laughs> <laughs> all right what else do we got uh looks like five did we read that one uh oh the dining with dickie one yeah yeah thank you uh, rage mage dollar 99 want to hear a song with you three guys in it Okay. 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 Kevin plays drums for uh, for all of you who may not know. He's a really really good drummer. His old band used to be called, or it's still called Into the Flood. Used to be called. I don't know if you guys are even a band anymore. You, used to be called. Used to be called uh, Into the Flood. You can check him out. He's a drummer for that band. Uh, really big back in the day. And uh, thank you so much for the two. Yeah. You do some Dicky Dines. Too. So so one thing that we're we are, we are doing is that on our Patreon we have a goal that if we can hit 250 patrons we will do 
um, a song. We will, me and Austin, will we'll put the time in. We'll do a really sick song together, and make it slap or whatever. I think we're at like two thirty right now. Well, we're so close. We're so close. We're so close. So yes, we are planning to do that. Um, I would love to. Obviously, we mm-hmm. did a few songs back in the day. Uh, Keelan Aleth. Keelan that, Aleth, that baby. Was, we did like five songs. Like, we've done way more songs than that. Right, but as far but, as like a project goes. Yeah, as far as a project goes. Um, yeah, I would love to. Uh, absolutely. Uh, wow, looks like we got a... It was that monster. Brett, Brett Rose with a hundred freaking hey, dollars. Dude, thank you so much. Uh, Brett Rose, I feel like that's a old school subscriber. Let's name. see. Uh, like y'all, y'all were the friends that I wish I had back... Kevin, can you not do oh, that, please? I was trying to blow it up. Uh, no worries. Y'all were the friends I wish I had back when I was growing up. Aw. Uh, still find myself to this day going back to my favorite videos when I'm having a bad day. Beer pong, board games, trying alcohol, which we were just talking about. <laughs> Food challenges. Uh, glad y'all are back on the grind. Keep it up. Yo, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Uh, Brett Rose. That's a wild uh, Thank you. $100. Thank you. <laughs> Holy crap. Thank you so Big much. Ups, man. Um, yeah, we're just glad that we could provide any type of entertainment for, for you and for, of course, everyone watching. And uh, thank you all so much for the support over the years it Big really bless. does mean a lot to us because uh, we love doing it and, yeah, you know, thank we, you for allowing us to continue doing this yeah we, we love doing it um, let's do a few more okay uh, what is it uh, rockin movies with Tyler is that what that says mm-hmm. uh, love you guys since their days including when Jared's channel was more active oh shit called out oh no uh, what is y'all's favorite album and or song of 2023 ooh buddy uh, I know actually, what mine is I actually have yeah hold on say yours I, I have a Greystone please <laughs> The yeah, fifth, baby. baby. Let's go. Ow, 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 ow. Fuck yeah. If you guys haven't seen Musician Mansion yet, go check it out. Austin and his band Greystone killed it that entire season. Yes, we fucking did. It was sick. Album of the year, uh, Kim Dracula, Gradual Decline in Morale. Okay. Sick album. There's like 20 songs on it. There's a lot of fun. Super unique. Song of the year, uh, Forgotten by The Plot New. Oh, okay. It's a good song. Sickest uh, dude, that was that song. It was why it like reminded me of why I fucking love Landon as a musician so much. He's just raw as fuck. His lyrics are always so emotional and raw, and that is just the most for like if you're a musician, that song is for you. Hell <laughs> it's yeah, just dude. Like, if you've ever suffered that. for music, the song's for you, bro. I love that. Okay, um, so let's uh, let's move on to segment two. Austin, you got one more. Uh, what is it? Uh, fun, fun. What does that say? It says top five. Favorite non-metal guilty pleasure songs. Oh my god! Fundahishi. Five non-guilty. Funda- five non-guilty. Five guilty Funda- non-metal Dai- songs. So, thank you. Most stuff that like uh, Brendan Urie does. I would think we both really love Brendan Urie. What was the question? Uh, top five favorite like non-metal songs, like guilty pleasure oh, songs. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, and yeah, most things by Brendan Urie. I didn't like the new album so much, but most things Brendan's done. But other than that, are like my favorite shit ever. Um, I'm a sucker for old school like <laughs> uh, like emo rock, like pop emo rock, mm-hmm. um, like any like Taking Back Sunday or The Used or Jimmy Eat World, um, Blink One Eighty Two, all that kind of shit. Oh, the Feel Good Drag by Amber Lynn, that would be up there. I love that song. Um, I don't know if you could call Alexis on Fire metal, like kind of maybe more like hardcore ish, like post hardcore. There's, prob- there's probably a core in there somewhere. There's a little bit of a core in there somewhere. Um, hmm. Probably like a Van Halen song for sure. Uh, So Long Astoria by the Ataris. Me and Kevin, we we both love the Ataris. That record, So Long Astoria, amazing record. Um, I don't know. What about you, Austin? What do you? There's like iconic non metals that I listen to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, dude. That whole Fever You Can't Sweat Out album by Panic is is so so sick. Uh, I listen to a lot of rap and stuff too, like uh, Quadeca, Guess Who, um, Mexican OT, the Johnny Dang track, very sick right now. Also, too, uh, Doreen Electra. I don't know if you've ever heard that artist, but uh, they have a song called Sodom and Gomorrah, and it's just like... Slaps. It's fucking tight. It's a cool-ass song. Yeah. I don't know. That's Those are... Yeah, I don't know. What is that? That's like four. That's a decent amount. Yeah, okay, yeah. Hot milk is cool, too. Hot milk? <laughs> Love me some hot milk. All right. Uh, okay, let's jump into the next segment. Uh, Kevin, if you're ready to transition us... Um, all right. So for this episode, Austin, what do you have for us today? This is your video. Please tell us what you have for us to do. I have an iconic moment for all of us. Okay. Uh, it is Spotify challenge. Guess which artist has more monthly listeners? Oh, here we go. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Kevin, can you please minimize? 
Thank you. Minimize your okay. output. Okay, let's do it. All right, can you guess? So it was, yeah. can you guess the artists with more Spotify monthly, monthly listeners? listeners? Yeah, okay, so it's not per song. It's just this month. <sighs> um, who's killing it more? Oh, my God. Okay, and chat, yeah, play along so with us. See if you can do I'll, this. I'll say one, and then I'll say who it's versus, okay. and then you can Okay, I'm terrible at this, by the way. I suck at these. These are hard. Don't cheat. Don't Google Yeah, don't you dare. It. Put Spotify we'll away. Know. We'll We're know. watching. We'll know if you're cheating, okay? Okay, what do you got? Let's All right. Do it. First one, uh, we're starting off hard. Oh, no, dude. Sleep Token. Okay. Versus Creed. Uh, what? Okay. You'd be surprised. I feel like this is a trick. I feel like you're fucking with me. Because obviously, I should say Sleep Token. But Creed is having a comeback. And they're doing Some like... Some would call it a crumbback, even. A crumbback. Okay. <laughs> And they're doing like boat tours or something. Boat tours. <laughs> I know they're making a comeback. Like I didn't know about the boat shit? tours. Aren't they playing on like cruise ships? Uh, they, uh, maybe. It's I think a, they are, aren't they? They're doing a Creed cruise. I'm not crazy. Am I chat? Am I I'm sure. Am I crazy? <laughs> um you know what? Since that is so drastically like it should be this, I'm gonna say it's not that, and I'm gonna actually say Creed has say, more monthly listeners. Did they, Creed is your final? Did they put out like a new song or something? Creed? Yeah. I, I know think, they're, they're like coming uh, back. Yeah, I don't know what the comeback entails, to be quite honest. I just have been hearing that they're coming back. Okay. I'm not sure if they have new music out or not. I'm going to say Creed, locking it in, final answer. It is Creed, by a significant margin. More so than Sleep Tokens? So, Sleep Tokens at 3.2 mil, and Creed is at 7.1. Let's <laughs> fucking go, baby! Flower. Well, I was hurt. Yes, that was kind of news today. I honestly thought that uh, I was like sleep talk is probably gonna be like a million times where I was like, oh Creed, let's fucking Dude, get it. Let's fucking fuck you, sleep token. <laughs> let's go Creed. Creed for life. Creed for <laughs> fucking life, dude. All right, the first one was was for the Creed heads in chat. All right, next one we got. Spirit Box okay. versus Static X. Is this just the Nick Nocturnal I know, I was gonna, you versus can't, the... This is why, yeah, if, if Sleep Token's mentioned, you have to obligatorily mention Spirit Box next. <laughs> so I was I had to get it out of the way so nobody talks about it, and then we can move on to the next dance. Uh, there are other bands besides Sleep Token and uh, fucking Spirit Box, dude. Spirit Token. So again, again, what was, the, what was it? Who? Static X. Static X. Well, hmm. They're killing it right now. Are they? Yeah, do you, are they, yeah, they are. Uh, They're on like a crazy comeback right now. Who's who's singing? His name is Zero. Zero. He, I, it's a weird thing. He, he looks like Wayne, but it's like a robot. But it's a guy dressed as like robot Wayne. Weird. Yeah, I actually and, and know nothing about this. Their new music's awesome. It sounds like Static X, but yeah. The, so that I, they're trying to like honor Wayne still. So the guy. Dresses like in costume to yeah to look oh. like Wayne and like I don't even know what that guy looks like because he's always in costume. Oh, interesting. But yeah, they're doing a ton of tours right now and their songs are so pretty Spirit sick. Box or Static X. Well, in yeah. that case, Spirit I'm gonna X. say Static X for Static sure. X. You know, lock that in. Yeah, because I feel like you're fucking with me again. It's Spirit Box. Is it Spirit Box? Yeah, Spirit Box is 2.2 million. They're killing and Static it. X is 1.6 million. Okay, which is pretty good. That's it's close. pretty great. That's yes, close. It's only 500,000. Dude, on. good for good for you guys. I, know, I was pretty stoked to see Static X on the come up right now. They're they're lit. That's like awesome. That I I knew oh, yeah, budget, budget. dude. I knew nothing about the comeback. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's the guy from Dope. Interesting. Oh whoa. Yeah, he's doing great. Okay. Okay. Well, wow. Good good for both of them. Yeah, Hell yeah. That's, one. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> Why did I do this one? I forgot this is even in here. What? Okay, who's got more monthly listeners? Is it Baby Metal or Tom McDonald? <laughs> McDonald. I'm sorry, McDonald. <laughs> McDonald. I called him McDonald. Tom McDonald or Baby or Metal? Baby Metal. <laughs> Honestly, though? <laughs> Tom McMetal, huh. Baby Tom. I, there's a lot of Baby people. Donald. There's a lot of people that like both. I know. Um, I thought this would be a good 1v1. I'm going to say Baby Tom. Locking it in. <laughs> Baby um, Tom is. Oh, damn. <laughs> the perfect battle. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Baby Metal. I'm going to say Baby Metal by like a few hundred thousand. A few hundred thousand? Mm-hmm. You lock it in? Yeah, I guess. Ooh. Yeah, lock it in. Sure. It's Tom McDonald, isn't it? It's Baby Metal. Yeah, let's go. Baby Metal's got 2.2 mil. Okay. And Tommy Boy's got 1.5. Okay. 
So it's about it's 600K. Close. Yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's about the same margin as the last one. Interesting. Okay. Good for you, Baby Metal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Defeating evil. Defeating <laughs> atomic. <now. laughs> I actually don't even listen. I don't even know what his music sounds like, to be mm. honest. This is a good one. Okay. Is it Polyphia? Okay. Or Seven Dust? Oh. <sighs> I'm going to say Seven Dust. 1v1. 1v1 I'm to gonna, death. I'm, I don't know. Polyphia's killing it, but Polyphia's like sexy music for guitar nerds, and Seven Dust is for like gym bros. And I feel like there's a lot more gym bros than there are guitar nerds. But yeah, I'm gonna say Seven Dust. Final answer? Yeah. You can't underestimate TikTok, my friend. Oh no. <laughs> Polyphia. You can't underestimate how sexy Tim Henson exactly. is. Exactly. <laughs> well, uh, 1.5 million for Polyphia. I knew it was a million something. And Seven for Dust sure. is 871. They're only 800,000? I, I thought they were going to be like over a mil. Didn't but... they just put out some new songs and like touring and shit? Yeah, or... I think they're on the, the rise again. I just don't think they have the pull that. Oh, I mean, wow. it's still a lot, but it's not what I thought it would be. I mean, yeah, 800,000 is very respectable, but Seven Dust? Right, yeah. The seven, they're seven dust. They're legends. Create a seven million. Seven million dust. Seven million. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, all right. Damn. All right. Almost had it. These are getting tough out here mm-hmm. in the wilderness. Is it August Burns Red? Oh, I haven't listened to them in a while. Or is it Slaughter to Prevail? Slaughter to Prevail. Final answer? Yeah. No, I, no I, question? I think so, yeah. It's August Burns Red. What? The slaughter is crushing right now. Dude, August Burns Red has such a dedicated fan base. Holy shit. Uh, August Burns Red has 985, and Slaughter has 975. Oh, my God. Okay, so it's like literally 10,000 people. All of you, right now, go listen to Slaughter (laughs) Veil so you can push it up past August. No, I love August Burns Red, but I... I thought they were... I I I thought Slaughter would be in the mill, to be honest. Yeah. Well, they're almost there. I know, but yeah, the... Semantics. Yeah. Also, a million monthly listeners on just Spotify is insane. Yeah, on just one app. Yeah, yeah considering on, how many yeah, you can is cr- for a for a deathcore band. Mm-hmm. Like, what's Lorna Shore at right now? I don't know. I did them last time, so I left them out on this one. Cause I I right. feel like Slaughter is doing. I don't. I actually don't know who's bigger, Lorna Shore or Slaughter Reveal. Oh, whoa, shocking. Maybe it's because it's been a minute since they dropped something. I mean, obviously they put out a lot. But, I feel like uh, Slaughter has to be doing more. Wait, yeah, they they are by like a, a lot. Eight hundred ninety-one thousand for Lorna. Okay, so eight ninety, and then Lorna was, or sorry, then Slaughter was nine nine seventy-five. Uh, a hundred thousand more. It's not insane. Yeah, but, but I, think, I feel like last time I looked at them, they had like two million. Hmm. Interesting. Just dropped off after the. I mean, that's I mean, the, that's, that's the album cycle thing. In, that's though. incredibly respectable for deathcore bands, right? Yeah, for sure. But Anything, I thought, yeah, if you can bust 500k, that's like crazy yeah. to do. Because like, did it, didn't Slaughter just release a song that has like 38 million oh, views Viking, yeah. on it, YouTube? It, yeah, it has eight uh, million on Spotify, but it's got probably more. It's on got, I, I'm pretty sure it's got like 30 something. I mean, they're crushing. Damn, Demolisher has 45 million. Yeah, they're crushing it. That's insane. Rush. Yeah, good for them. All right. All right. Up next, we got Paramore. Ooh. Versus Paramore or Paraless? Para. Same. Parasocial? Versus Falling in Reverse. Paramore versus Falling in Reverse. Oh. E. Falling, falling in is killing it right now. And Paramore is breaking up. Falling. <laughs> <laughs> Are they? Yeah, they. I think they announced that they're going to be calling it quits soon. Oh, no. Well, that can actually, if they're doing like a breakup last tour, that could be like like the the nostalgia fucking. That'll pay for the rest of their fucking lives. Um, Falling is selling out arenas right now. They're Mm -hmm. crushing it. But Paramore is massive. Oh, man. I'm going to (sighs) say. I'm going to. I'm going to say falling in reverse. As more. Yeah. How much do you think the margin is? Close Period. within a million. Okay, I think locking it. Yeah, Paramore. Paramore by a lot. Really, uh, Falling Inverse has six point five million, which is crazy. Which is a which lot. Like, damn, Jesus Christ. That's a lot. Paramore has nineteen point eight million. Okay, right so now. they are much, yeah. much bigger <laughs> like, than I. I, dude, I when I looked it up, I was like, that'd be a perfect pairing, and I was like, 
Well, when you said it's like it, three I was times like, as much. Yeah, when you said it, I was like, "Well, Falling is crushing it." But mm-hmm. then again, Paramore is kind of a legacy band, right? Yeah, it's so like, they they have like just so much music out. Um, okay, wow. Yeah, that was the shocker. Yeah. <laughs> the That's interesting crazy. thing was when I went to go with Ryan Bruce to go film the Used, um, they were they were talking about how. Not only do they have new fans come out or old fans come out, they have a whole group of new fans that like their new stuff and don't know any of their old songs. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure Paramore has got the same thing going on because of social media, which For sure. is it's totally interesting. TikTok. Tink, tink. Okay. Wow. Damn. Yeah, that was Almost that 20 mil. That was That's a shocker. fucking crazy. All right. Uh, all right, next one we got Avenge Sevenfold okay. <laughs> versus Blink 182. Life is but a dream. Versus Blink 182. Yeah. Oh, my God. Ugh. I'm gonna say blink. They're they're so mainstream. How much do you think by? What, you, what would your margin be? Few, few million. Ten like, million. I would say like ten million. That was a pretty good guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty spot on. They have uh, just under nineteen million. Blink does. Okay. And Event Sevenfold has nine point seven million. Okay. So they still both have a lot, but I Blink was has right. a Blink has a ton. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Blink. Yeah, they're fucking huge, man. They're they're like, and they just released new music like what a year ago mm-hmm. or something. So I mean, or sooner than that. I don't even really follow them, but. I've seen them. I was, I was hoping that uh, the me- you'd be like blinded by it, like, oh, Avenged Sevenfold's huge in metal. <laughs> well, yeah, in like, metal, right? You're like, for well, sure. But Blink is clearly bigger. I also don't know if uh, their more recent album is hitting the Jim Bro audience. <laughs> so maybe <laughs> missed the dem. Not. I mean, all right. Oh, this okay. This is a tough battle. Uh, Atreyu. Okay. Versus Story of the Year. Oh wow, I haven't thought of that band in so long. I'm going to say story of the year because I feel like if this was a Treyu like 10 years ago, I would say a Treyu. Mm-hmm. A Treyu now is still sick, but I don't know if they're pulling numbers like that. So, I mean, I could be totally wrong on this, but I'm going to say story of the year. I think story of the year is doing more. Okay. Yeah. Locking it. Locking lock it. Final answer. It is story of the year. Yeah, let's go. Only by... Uh, it's 1.9 million for story, and okay. Atreyu is 1.7. Oh, so it's close. Yeah, it's pretty close. Very close. close. Very nice. I was surprised. I was like, damn. And story just put out some new shit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that, they put that an album be why. last year. Yeah. It was awesome. I haven't. I still haven't listened to it. Dude, it's, I need it's to check a, it out. It's a, it's a throwback, nostalgic throwback. Yeah, it's damn. Awesome. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Classico. All right, let's good move game. on. Good, let's move on. Good configure. Okay, up next we got. My fucking limp biscuit in the building. Jesus Christ. Did you see the picture of Fred Durst in the cowboy outfit on stage? Yeah, it's beautiful. Could not even tell it was him, dude. (laughs) Kevin, can you pull that up really quick? The, it's, it's, uh, I don't remember which festival it was. It's Fred Durst. Uh, live at some big festival, dressed as like he's like a cowboy. Yeah, he's giddied up. He's like yeehawed up, and you cannot even tell it's him. <laughs> that was like, that iconic yeah, thing. can you show the, that on screen for, way, for the chat? The Dude, when I saw this, I was like, no fucking way is that Fred Durst? Yeah, crazy donkeys. <laughs> um, I've got a yeah, whole yeah. chicken coop. <laughs> Come oh on. my god! Oh, there, okay, there it is. Yeah, pull that, pull that up for the chat. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, Fred Durst, ladies and gentlemen. I saw that and I was like, no, that's not. That's like Dirks Bentley. There's, <laughs> ladies that's, and gentlemen, that's fucking Brooks and Dunn. That, that, that looks like Garth Pork Brooks. Looks like Garth Brooks. Yeah, that's probably what he was going for. I'm sure. But yeah, a real fucking, quick great idea, Darth Brooks, and he's a. Is a Sith Lord? <laughs> it's just Fred Durst. It's Darth, <laughs> Darth uh, yeah, Girth Darth Brooks. Biscuit. All right, so is it Mr. Biscuit? Mr. Biscuit. Or is it Papa Roach? <laughs> Ooh. Hmm. Papa Roach, surprisingly, is still doing good numbers. Dude, it's like they have a secret, massive audience. Yeah. Like, I never... I don't know a single person in the past like ten years that I've met that has like brought them up. Yeah. But if you look at their numbers, they are fucking so big. It's, it's everyone like, that cut their lives into pieces. Yeah, there's so many of them. There's, so, there's, there's so, so many, many pieces, pieces now. They're all listening on Spotify. I'm gonna say Papa Roach because again, uh, every time I see like something they do, it's mm-hmm. just they're it, it's massive, like huge. But I could be wrong. But I'm gonna say the Papa. El Papa. El Papo. 
Uh, it's Limp Bizkit. It's Limp Bizkit. It's Limp Bizkit. Okay, okay. Limpy Boys got three point or thirteen point four million. I was gonna say three. Yeah, I know, right? No way, Limp Bizkit only has three. And Papa Roach has eleven point one. So it's it's kind of close, but okay, it's so it's close. Three million margin almost. Still, dude, Papa Roach. And I right. And the That's thing is, huge. is like I haven't listened to a Papa Roach like a new Papa Roach mm-hmm. song in. Years. Also, just and they have eleven million. Shout out to both these bands for having the goofiest names on paper and having <laughs> this big of a fucking career. Right. Papa Roach and Limp Biscuit, like that's like, <laughs> that's something a kid says like by himself, and you're like, and just ignore it. You don't ever, you don't hang on to that and go make a label out of it, making my whole identity a biscuit that is limp. <laughs> No oh, structure. Fuck. Uh, wow. Okay. Well, good to know. Yep. Good to know. Good job, Biscuit yeah, Boys. Yeah, they're killing it, man. Good for them. All right. This is the last one. Are you fucking ready for this, I'm dude? I'm ready, man. Ready I'm ready. To swing for the fences. Let's do it. Are you ready? Are, are you ready? Is it Deftones okay. with more, or is it Corn with more? Deftones or Corn? <laughs> My initial reaction is to say Corn because I feel like. Oftentimes, so is mine. Yeah. Corn. <laughs> just, just <laughs> I guess randomly. Corn, I corn. What would you like to eat, corn? Corn. Yeah, no, I, I think corn is like, he's like transcended that like new metal genre, metal genre, and he's just a fucking, they're like celeb, they're just mm-hmm. a celebrity name. But Deftones gets the horny views. That's true. There are a lot of horny people yeah, out there. Deftones, Hence, sleep Deftones token. is sleep tokens for our parents, like that generation. Whoa. Mm-hmm. I've never thought of it that way. Deftones is the millennial sleep token. The that's crazy, bro. Gen X. Gen X. Yeah, the one right above us. They're like, you know, like the horny. You see, like a forty-year-old woman on the bus with singing Deftones with headphones on. And you're like, she's that horny. girl's horny. <laughs> <laughs> you ever seen a cigarette mom lick her lips? She's listening to Deftones. <laughs> gonna say corn has more corn. monthly listeners on spotify than deftones corn corn it is corn it is that's what i figured only by a hundred thousand really it is corn has 10.1 mil mm-hmm. and deftones has 10 mil wow that it's pretty close i was gonna say a couple mil difference no that's like right out like that's it, like, like ne- all the like deftones puts out a teaser next month they might pass yeah <laughs> come on deftones tease us if Chino just go, puts goes on Instagram and goes, uh, <laughs> <laughs> 10, 10, 10 million. 10 you're million you're already teasing horny cigarette moms. Give us that <laughs> damn teaser. But yeah, that's all oh I got for today. My. That was the <laughs> guess who has more monthly listeners. Spotify a dish. Oh, I love it. I love it. This always it. That one, this time around, it didn't mm-hmm. surprise me as much. Mm-hmm. We've done a few of these episodes before. If you guys want to go back on uh, our channel, you can watch those. Um, we've done, what, like two or three of these before? Yeah, I think it's Some the of them one. have shocked me. Yeah. But, like, this one I was a little bit more like, eh, okay. Kind of you know, could play kinda, it out a little more kinda in your play head. Out. Yeah. The, I guess Some, the, there was a couple curveballs. The Paramore one. Yeah, Paramore was I guess wild. I'm not giving Paramore en- enough mm-hmm. credit in my head. Yeah. Because I was like, hmm, Underpl- falling in reverse. Paramore yeah. and August Burns Red. <laughs> yeah, August Burns Red. Well, mm-hmm. I haven't, they put out like 30 albums. Right. I haven't listened to them probably in like five years, six years. Mm-hmm. So I, it just might be like outside of like where I'm at musically in my journey i used to listen like composure like that like afterburner like that was my yeah, the shit record was when i was crazy. like 20 yeah. but yeah and now you just listen to fucking dope smoker by sleep all yeah the time. now i just actually sleep all the time um nice well cool thank you guys so much for joining us on that one Epic. uh austin's segment of who has more monthly spotify listeners um <laughs> yeah were you awesome. surprised or not? Nah? <laughs> Are you fucking surprised? <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so, okay, there's segment number two, and now let's go, uh, Kevin, if we can pull up chat, and uh, we can say hi to them for a few minutes here, and if there are any more Super Chats, um, we'll make sure that we don't miss any of those. We're about, uh, what is that, we're about an hour and a half in? Nice, perfect. Cool. Uh, This is fun. Thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, This is the first time that we've done this, like, official live stream i've never done a fish in this room i've seen you do a fish i've never done a fish i've seen you do a fish you can't prove that you can't prove that um i i think i think this is cool i like this we can kill two birds with one stone um i did see some questions i want to address real quick where people are asking like hey uh you know you said you were gonna be doing the live streams now are we still getting the regular content and are the streams going to stay on the channel for those who miss the streams yes of course the streams will live on our youtube channel forever as as long as we have a channel they will be there and we are still going to be clipping out the segments and putting them onto youtube on our channel as individual videos um we're the only thing that's changing is we're doing the filming of them live so for those of you who can join us who can catch it in the moment it's like a cool uh cool thing for you guys it's fun for us to interact mm-hmm. with you um and then you can see how it turns out with the edit versus live You're yeah like, oh, for wow. sure for see sure different that was. and you can see how we are in real life and the, the how things are like exactly like mm-hmm. the edits usually like we really don't even edit much at all um i think austin's gonna are you gonna use the restroom or standing yeah, up I need to use the restroom. okay he, austin's gonna use the restroom real quick um Go if there are chat, follow me <laughs> follow austin into the restroom chat um so yeah the 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 streams are going to live on youtube and uh the then we're gonna clip out the videos and we're gonna po- uh, have them hosted on the channel um but yeah this is fun i enjoy this i like doing this i think it's cool uh kevin do we have any uh new super chats that we need to address at all or are we are we good on that okay cool Awesome. Fans, start dropping questions. Okay, yeah. If you have any questions for us, let us know. Um, if you guys want to follow us for more content and you know, direct message us, talk to me in Austin, show us your music, show us your band. If you want to get your name on the wall behind us here, we do have a Patreon. Uh, I don't know if it's in the description right now. It's patreon.com slash the Dickie Dine Show, and you can go over there, and there's a bunch of different perks for the different tier lists. If you want to uh, support us, if you want to help us out there, that would be a amazing and uh yeah we can give you more content and interact with you and uh keep the lights on in the studio and keep kevin's babies fed because he's got growing babies and you guys don't understand how big they're <laughs> yeah kevin's got a little little like uh, one-year-old that's like this this big he's massive um but yeah we have a few more things planned for you guys for the stream and uh, I'm excited. Uh, what is the next segment that we're going to be doing, Kevin? Is it the... Spin the wheel. Spin but also, the wheel. Let's get some toilets in the chat for Austin. Let's, let's go. Those... <laughs> yeah. Toilets in the chat for Austin. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, what is my opinion on sleep token? Question in chat. I think they're cool. Um, I think it's cool that any time that an artist can kind of like manipulate uh the sound of of metal a little bit to reach a bigger audience and bring people into the genre whether you know you may not like their music or not i think it's really cool that you're bringing more people into the world of metal who will then be exposed to more metal bands underground bands and get into the culture so i think it's really cool uh that they're doing that there's a few there's a few songs sleep token that i do enjoy i don't sit and listen to them very much i'm not like an avid sleep sleeper um i'm not i'm not i'm not like a huge fan of them but i think they're i think they're okay and i think it's cool what they're doing for uh for the genre they're getting people into the into the music so uh yeah i think it's really cool uh austin if you want to come back, I'm going to use the restroom real quick, and then we'll jump into our next segment. Yeah, thanks for pulling down the fort. Yeah, we got uh, we got toilets and chat for you. Toilets? Toilets and chat. Oh, come on. Let me see your dumpers. Come on, chat. Let's see your dumpers out. Uh, praise be to the toilet lords. Uh, unto us be blessed. One bidet a day. Graciously unto our... Uh, bottoms <laughs> what's going on everybody uh hundred dollar uh toilet chats right now we got the big fan of y'all and always appreciate the content from both of you guys over the years big hunted thank you what does that say i thought it said dog titty for a second <laughs> it's like okay dog titty thank you for the sub toilets in the chat let's go look at all them turlets brother should make an episode of job stories oh my god yeah i could i could talk for two hours about 
I only worked at 7-Eleven for six months, and I have a million stories from that place, dude. Bobby, give me a bleh. 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 Just like that. that was, did that do something? Did that do anything for you? Uh, there was an opportunity to cross streams, and they messed it up. Well, somebody had to be here. Somebody had to sit here and, and talk to you guys. They actually. Do you remember when Richard weird. Sherman? It was Richard Sherman and another quarter cornerback. They were supposed to do a drug test, and they ended up crossing streams while doing the drug test, and it tainted the drug <laughs> test in the NFL. I this was in the, like 2012. I like the vagueness of they ended up crossing streams. <laughs> they like, did. They like, did. How they did were, that happen? <laughs> they were messing around, and somebody witnessed it, and they were too timid to do anything, and so it got thrown out. <laughs> Hilarious! Just some disappointed guy holding the jug of piss. It's fucking ruined. Just this piss is tainted. Somebody sent in a bad batch of piss, bro. What's this shit about? I come into work, all I ask is for a little piss respect. Nobody gives it to me every day, day in day out. I get toilet emojis. Nobody respects my piss. Show Crossing me. streams is behind the Patreon wall. Show me your gristle <laughs> missile. How okay. Do I get me a scone? Ooh, I'm t- you. That's actually a good idea. You should put a, a gristle toe up in your. A gristle toe? <laughs> that sounds disgusting. Like in your window or your door frame? Is that your side project, gristle toe? Gristle toe? No, it's how I trick women into kissing me. <laughs> we just got a super chat hey, from baby. Kevin Raymond. Look up the gristle. T- you're right underneath the gristle toe. Sweetie. Hey, Kevin Raymond, thanks for the two. <laughs> Mary smash kill Nickelback, Creed, and Stained. I would marry Creed. I would smash Nickelback and kill Stained. I think I would also. Do- Who'd you marry? Creed. Smash Nickelback. I mean, their songs are horny as fuck. Yeah, I'd probably do that too. Well, I think, but yeah. Have might, you hmm. listened to some of Nickelback, dude? That he's some horny songs, dude. Yeah, but not the horny I want. It's like aggr- <laughs> he's, he's like aggressively no, yeah, horny. Dude, it's like Scott Stapp will make love to you. Yeah. <laughs> Kroger will fuck no, you. No, yeah. Nickelback's <laughs> songs are about Chad Kroger being horny. Yeah. That's, that's I'm the driving difference. in my car. About to fucking come. I can't fucking hold it anymore. <laughs> it's like, okay, Chad, chill, bro. He's, that's um, why he plays guitar so low. He's always going to fucking rock. He's always got a rock, rock hard car. <laughs> Uh, looks like we have a ten dollar from uh, what is that? Jamie Proudlock is it? What does that say? Okay, we all know what Nick Knock looks like. <laughs> we know how cringe our boy is. <laughs> In what world does that boy end up with Paula? <laughs> Lol, how did that even happen? Uh, you know, they hit it off. They hit it off, man. Their personalities clicked, dude. Paula wanted to move to the states from Brazil, and Nick was her way in. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. The, they, they just hit it off, man. They yeah, I did. mean, dude, you pro- it's probably not often that you ha- are like also to, uh, I don't know, like a Brazilian woman, and people are like, What are you into? and you're like, Breakdowns, and they're like. <laughs> Me too. Like, like that's like, probably a rare find. She's probably. I like, hate clean I finally singing. Finally found a breakdown boy. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. It's it's very funny. Um. And and you know Nick's a Nick's a charming boy. Mm-hmm. Nick's a charming. He's a very boy. sweet man. He's yeah. also you know he's very successful. He's he's got things to offer. So it, it, it it's not strange. Mm-hmm. It was also think. kind of surprising though. We're all like, what? I mean, hey, look at Pete Davidson. I think Nick Nocturnal is the is the death core Pete Davidson. He's the metal Pete Davidson. Just right? so just so chat knows, they got the butthole none of, eyes. None of us but had eyes. any indication that that was ever going to happen. No, I I actually did not know. It's funny because like we left the mansion, and in my head I was like. Uh, there was there was a couple of other people I'm not gonna say, but I was like I, they I think they're gonna get together after this, and it was not Nick and Paula. Mm-hmm. And then when it came out, I was like, wait, what? Uh-huh. I was like, I did not see that at all. Yeah, like, no, I mean, yeah, they were just like being friendly. I didn't, it didn't seem romantic at in no, any of the things. Not it just at seemed all. like she didn't, you know, she felt out of place, and Nick was just like being very nice and helping yeah. her. Well, out and with Nick's stuff. a sweet guy. Yeah, he's a very sweet guy. So, um, did we miss one? I think there was a there was one that that just went up. Okay, so we have what does that say? Perry, Penny, what is that? Perry, uh, with the seven ninety nine. Thank you, Perry. Do you play video games? Yes. Uh, Austin used to play Overwatch. Yes, you did. I used to play. Yeah. Used to play, it, and then now you don't. Because no. Overwatch Two is dog Ooh. shit. 
Um, yes, uh, I do. I do. I, I'm pretty sure you do as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I got the new Call of Duty. Yep, a new Call of Duty, which I haven't played very often, uh, or very often lately. I did some of the zombies with Kevin. Me and Kevin used to play zombies a lot. Uh, haven't played the new Modern Warfare though, but we did. The, we did play a lot of zombies, and then. Uh, I play uh, Diablo 4, which kind of sucks, unfortunately, mm-hmm. but I've been playing that last epoch. A lot of, like, ARPGs. I'm a huge ARPG fan. Um, so, yeah, I've been, like, trying, like, some of those games. Um, Apex Legends also haven't played recently. We've been playing a lot of Magic the Gathering recently. <laughs> True, yeah, that's been taking up most We've of been, the... I've been going mm-hmm. crazy on building decks with Magic the <laughs> Gathering. So my video game time that uh, used to be for games is now just more magic. so Magic the Gathering. Like every Sunday, True. the boys come over and we just have like a big Magic night. Yeah. Um, and that's been fun. so fun. Yeah, we did that last night. It was, we played two games and it took like six Dude, hours. I couldn't yeah. believe it. Well, it was five people in a command. <laughs> Game. I don't know if any of you know what uh, anything about com- yeah, uh, probably just magic. Spoke gibberish <laughs> but, but yeah, there was five people in a commander game, and uh, yeah, it, it was just it lasted literally so like three long. and a half hours. It was such a long game. Um, but yes, we play video games. Uh, what's that? I can't. Is that Evil Skittles with a ten? Evil Skittles, uh, what's up, player? I can read the I can read the ch- the text pretty well. It's just the names sometimes are hard to read. Uh, Evil Skittles with a ten. Just want to say I appreciate y'all so fucking much for being genuinely awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and inter- uh, gen- oh, sorry, genuinely awesome, entertaining people. Been watching y'all since the channel first came out. This is uh, Inferno. Oh hell yeah, yeah. Mr. Nick. Awesome. Good What's to up? see you. Um, thank you so much for the 10. Thank you for stopping by. Appreciate you watching. I just realized you me calling him Nick. There's now three names for him in that one sentence. <laughs> the evil Skittle, Inferno, the evil Nick. Evil Skittle, <laughs> Inferno, and Nick. Um, okay. Uh, what is that one? Luke. Locomotive. Nice. With the two. <clears throat> Locomotive. I... I, I Honestly, Locomotive, it would be. Locomotive would, would be cool. That'd be clever. Uh, y'all play the new Red Dead. Uh, is there a new one? Yeah. Wait, is, are you talking about Red Dead Two or? Is I was like, like, didn't Red Dead Two come out like six years ago? Like, oh, yeah, a long, <laughs> like time, a long ago. time ago. Uh, um, I played that one. I did play it a little <laughs> I bit. I don't know if there's another one. Though. My girlfriend played it a little bit. Yeah, I said I played it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, babe. Um, Okay, so let's go into uh, the next segment here. Really quick. Okay, so I made a purchase. Y'all want to see what the the purchase is? Close your eyes quick. Don't let them have the satisfaction. Turn away. I made a purchase. Ah, It's gross. Ah. And this is my purchase. It is a spin wheel. Okay. And it looked bigger on the website, but, you know, as... Some things sometimes are not mm-hmm. as big as they appear. I have <clears> the same <throat> problem with my bad dragon order. Yeah. Um, so on this spin wheel, there are uh, some games. And so if you watch the Diggy Dine show, which uh, I assume a lot of you <laughs> at least do. <laughs> what is that? By the way, my name is Jared. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for watching today. Welcome. In. Um, so we play games sometimes, little card games or little board games or whatever, uh, like really fun games. T- but all um, small. So right here are just some things that I don't even know if you can see it because it's so small. But I wrote down a bunch of stuff that we could potentially play and so i'm just gonna spin this wheel or austin would you like to spin the wheel do you want to get first spin Dude, I'm kinda priority spin. okay Which way is it so austin say? uh i think it goes either but what? but you can choose whatever just give it a fucking ripper dude right? and whatever it lands on we will do that was a good spin all right what do we got what do we got we got Death trivia. Okay. Death. Death trivia. Death. I don't like to die. Okay. So. Merge. Every time I die, it hurts. This is a fun little. This is a fun little game that we're gonna call death trivia. It is actually from a board game called Stupid Deaths, but we're gonna play it a little bit differently. Typically, you play it on a board and you have little tokens, but we don't have an overhead camera. We haven't quite hit that uh, tier on Patreon yet. <laughs> uh, so, so um, we're going to play it slightly differently. Um, and we're going to play it with you, chat. So on these cards, Austin, I will give you uh, half the stack here. Uh, shuffle. Damn it. Okay, randomize. I, I Don't cheat. All. I read them all. Um, it doesn't matter if you see them. So there, there are cards here. <laughs> and uh, are you okay? You want to cut this? 
Uh, yeah, I don't want to make sure you're you're uh, not cheating. Okay, so on these cards, there are little stories, and it has the name of somebody, when they were born, and when they died. And then it says down here, true or false. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back and forth, me and Austin, and we're going to read these names and read these little stories. And then we're going to play it with you as well, chat, and we're going to see if the story is convincing enough for us to believe that it's real or or not. Okay. Simple, right? Okay. And it will say on the card the truth or the false. So, Austin, would you like to go first? Oh, uh, you'll you'll never stop me. Yeah, I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Play along with us. Here we go. All right. <laughs> Bob Beating. Bob Beating. Okay. Born 1913. Okay. Died 1968. Okay. As a statue cleaner, Bob was accustomed to heights. So working on the Statue of Liberty was nothing new. Oh no. Unfortunately, his safety harness broke, and Bob swung Ooh. down and onto one of the spikes around Liberty's head. It took almost a day for the recovery crew to get him down. Okay, that last part makes me think it's true. Because if it almost took a day, or it took like a full <laughs> day, like so he's just like, up there impaled yeah, Bob skewer on a there. fucking skewer on a spike. It's a safety concern. We can't get up there right now. <laughs> There's too much hey, wind. Bob, we're coming. <sighs> oh, no. <laughs> Sliding down slowly. Oh, okay. True or false? Yeah, in fact, that's hmm. where Vlad the Impaler came up with that idea. Oh, shit. <laughs> he was Bob. He was the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, okay, I I was gonna say false mm -hmm. until that last sentence. It took him almost that a little day. detail of it took them mm -hmm. like a full day to get him down is like, it's like okay, a morbid and like damn. <laughs> yeah, that's like morbid enough to be true. I think um, I'm going to say I'm gonna say true. True for Bob. I'm beating. gonna say that's how he died. <clears throat> It is false. What? That did not happen. Damn. But I know it, the last line does sound very convincing. Wait, when was the Statue of Liberty built? Oh, yeah, it'd be funny if it wasn't even If it wasn't it. even, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. it's like, says 1913 to 1968. So if he died, next, I mean, so yeah, it was, was built, it being but, built in 1968? I guess that would be an easy way to no, find I, out. I think it was before that. Was it before that? When did they build the Statue was, of Liberty? Uh, it was 2015, actually. <laughs> it was 20, <laughs> 2020, dude. That's what started... Late 1800s? The late 1800s, I think. Are you... Really? The late 1800s. The late 1800s? Is that true, chat? Yeah. 1876. Wow. It's a good year. Okay. Well, I'm a fucking idiot because I didn't know that. <laughs> and that would have been a very easy way for me to tell that that is not true. I did not know. Now I do. Well, it would have been built. Well, if he was died building it, it wouldn't be still being built. I think it just said he was working. He's a cleaner. He wasn't. Oh, he was a cleaner. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought he was a builder. No, he was just cleaning it. Okay, fair enough. Okay, next up, David Lazarus. What a name for someone who died. Uh, okay, born 1946, died 1974. Lazarus, a New Zealander, loved golf, but his hobby proved to be his downfall. Trying to reach the 14th green, his ball hit a tree, bounced back, and struck him on the temple, killing him instantly. <laughs> Adding insult to injury, he had earlier scored his first hole in one, but could not live to fully celebrate it. Damn. What does that mean? So, like, he hit a hole in one <clears throat> earlier in the golf session, right. but then he, like, died. So, so like he he, he couldn't like, like well like, he still it. got it but he wasn't able to like go at home and be like honey I did it text his boys you know I did a hole in one that's one. pretty funny if he died if that's true that's God, I, hmm. it's almost too funny though <laughs> it reminds me of a joke where a pastor skips Sunday service to go golfing and. God grants him every hole, a hole in one. Mm. And he was like, an angel was like, God, why'd you do that? And he was like, well, who's he going to tell? Because <laughs> <laughs> he's skipping funny. church. Right. It's like, 
I had the best game. I'll never have a better game. Yeah, that. I can't tell anyone. Fuck. Um, true or false? David Lazarus. True. Let, let's tr- no, his last name's Lazarus, bro. This is false. <laughs> false. Fake. Bullshit. It is indeed false. Yeah, I almost fell for it until you said his name again. I was like, no, hold on. It was second. funny how quickly you flipped. You were yeah. like, wait, fucking Lazarus? No way, yeah, dude. Wait, that's, Lazarus. that's fucking false, bro. I know that, dude. <laughs> that's bullshit. Oh, yeah. That's pretty funny. All right, Austin, your turn. All right. We got motherfucking <laughs> John Horrocks. John Horrocks. Born 1818, died 1846. Okay. Horrocks was a pioneer and explorer of 19th century Australia. Oh, I should have done an Australian accent. <laughs> I was doing like old mine worker. <laughs> Australia. Yeah. He subjected himself to constant risk of death in thousands of truly dangerous situations. <laughs> Ultimately, he died when an ill tempered camel <laughs> while shifting its weight <laughs> accidentally hit the trigger off Horrocks' gun. <laughs> Is it true? <laughs> A little New Zealand camel. <laughs> I gotta admit, I was focusing so hard on the accent, I didn't hear a word you said. Oh, just, I'll say it normal. So a camel shot him, right? <laughs> he subjected himself to constant risk of death in thousands of truly dangerous situations. Okay. Ultimately, he died when an ill-tempered camel, while shifting its weight, accidentally hit the trigger of his gun and oh, killed him. Oh no, that would <laughs> suck. <laughs> That's like lame enough to be true for sure. I'm gonna say true, <laughs> yeah, dude. I know that. I'm like, gonna say true. Yeah, like, like embarrassing. Like, how'd your husband die? And like, yeah, a camel walked too hard. Yeah, it's just embarrassing. <laughs> it's it's like up. it's like being shot by a Kia boy. It is true. It is true. Yeah, Let's yeah. go. Good deduction. Hell yeah, a John Horrocks. <laughs> Damn, t- taken out by a camel. <laughs> nice. All right, next one. Ismail Al Jari, birth date unknown, died one thousand eight. What did Wait, they even how? have records back then? Yeah, you you don't know the birthday, but you know for sure they died. Yeah, he for no, he's, I carbon dated he's her. One thousand eight, back in high school. So, Mr. Al was a scholar who compiled an important uh, Arabic dictionary. He also experimented with the idea of flight and devised an apparatus with wooden wings. He tried out the wings from the roof of a mosque in Nashapur, Persia. Unfortunately, they didn't fly, and he fell to his death. <laughs> Yeah, is that brothers. true or false, Austin? That sounds like bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> but I could also believe that some guy was just like, before any type of plane, just put two and two together and was like, this. I bet I could be a bird. <laughs> like, check this shit out. Just killed himself. But who's documenting that and knows that that's what happened? In 1008. Yeah, that's like, I'm going to say, I would be impressed if they put this together. I'm going to say false. You're going to say false? All right. Well, that one is true. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Christ. So, uh, yeah, don't do that yeah, at it was home. Reported by a guy that saw it. And he's like, that guy thinks he's a bird, doesn't he? <laughs> I, I, I put it together. I'm going to write this I'm shit down. The authorities. If I don't write this down, no one's going to believe it. Yeah, no, he, he wasn't suicidal, ma'am. He thought he was a bird. <laughs> that reminds me of the flat earth guy. They tried to build a rocket so he could prove oh, the Earth that was, was flat. Yeah, that was pretty sad. Honestly, it's, it's pretty it was bummer. like very ironic, but also like the family being like, "Oh fuck, it's all wrong." Oh no, it's pretty sad. All right, Austin. Uh, Eben Byers. Eben, born 1880, died 1932. Okay. Byers won the 1906 U.S. Amateur Golf Championship. A lot of golf deaths. Yeah. Later, he was given medicine for an injury. And was so convinced by its uh, efficacy that he drank hundreds of bottles of it. Oh, my God. Not realizing that the medicine consisted of little more than radium dissolved in water. The radiation caused multiple cancers, killing him. Oh, my God. Okay, the one thing I will say seems a little bit sus... Where the fuck did he get hundreds of bottles of medicine? Yeah, that is a lot of... That is a lot of fucking medicine. Just a, a, one guy with a cart, and he's like, I've got a sweet deal for you, man. <laughs> 300 bottles. What are you buying? And never tell anybody you've met me. <laughs> <laughs> Fades, he has a side quest. 
You'd fades just, into the distance. Jumps into a river. Because water. of the hundreds of bottles thing, I don't know. Like, where are you finding hundreds of bottles of medicine? Hundreds of bottles. Isn't that also, like, probably really expensive? Is he, like, a rich man or something? Maybe. I, I don't know. That seems sus to me. I'm going to say false. False? Final? I'm going to say false. It's true. It's true? Yeah, I think I actually know who this is about, too. Yeah, he was rich. Uh, and he, yeah, he was taking this like tonic water that was supposed to like magically fix everything. And it slowly ate his throat and jaw oh my God. until he had like literally nothing left. And they, they died from it because he like, what the fuck? At what point do you stop? Uh, right. Like the magic water is <laughs> destroying my, my throat. Gene, my jaw. I should keep drinking it. That's so crazy. Yeah, it was pretty brutal. There's a picture online of, of oh, of no, it. it's no, pretty no, no, Don't no, pull no, it up, no, obviously, no, but no, it's, no, no. if you want to, warning, no, his name's no. Eben Byers. Check it out. Holy fuck, dude. <laughs> it's pretty fucking gnarly. Damn. Okay. Uh, oh, moving on. This all that, one. It's all that moon water. <laughs> it's all the moon water. No. Uh, Pearl Craddock. Born 1845, died 1883. Pearl's husband, James, was a British Army officer. When his gambling caught up with him, his disgrace left him only one noble option, to shoot himself. Unfortunately, Pearl was in the next room, and their thin walls allowed the bullet, rather ignobly, to reach her as well. Oh, no. Wow. Oh. That's too good. I don't think somebody wrote that's true. That's too bad. That's crazy. That's like one of those like the universe moments. I think that's real. Damn. I think that's true. You think it's true? Yeah. That one is false. Oh man. That would be crazy. That dude. sounded awesome. I that would hoping. be crazy. I'm not hoping because that sucks for her, but it just feels like, oh, what a bit what a bittersweet. Yeah. That's wild. Damn, I, that I couldn't sucks. imagine. It, okay, you know well, what's false? I, I feel like that. Also has probably happened at some right, point. Yeah. Maybe on purpose. <laughs> Maybe on purpose, but like on accident specifically. Oh, you, that'd be a crazy. What if you, you you knew that the walls were thin and you you like staged trying to shoot yourself? And yeah. You're like, well, I panicked the last second, and pulled away, and it went through the wall and killed my wife on accident. Oh and my god! I swear, I was trying I, to kill myself. I'm an officer. All right, Austin. What oh you got? shit, that's right. I'm so committed to that one. <laughs> All right. Martha Jones in the Hizzy. Let's go. Born 1867, died 1896. Short life. Ever wanted to know where the phrase in a pickle came from? Oh shit. Well, meet Martha Jones. <laughs> That is, okay. What is Who this? An OnlyFans bio, dude. <laughs> uh, Jones died at the Pennsylvania Pickle Company after drowning in a vat of pickle solution that she fell into. Poor Jones certainly ended up in a pickle. Oh my God. Martha Jones. <laughs> Going off to work, honey. I'll see you later. <laughs> Is that pickle solution? Oh, we're sorry to tell you, Mr. Jones, but your wife has been pickled. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm gonna say true. true. I'm gonna say true. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm gonna say Poor true. Poor Martha. It's false. It's false. It's too good to be Dude. true. Dude. I wish. <laughs> That's such a good one, dude. Your wife's been pickled. Imagine being told that. So, like, can I get her back? I'm sure Mrs. Jones, your daughter, was she's she is a pickle now. <laughs> it was the fun, funniest. It's the funniest shit. Yeah, <laughs> it's the funniest goddamn shit I've ever seen. Period synced up just now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, General John Sedgwick. Sedgwick. Born 1813, died 1864. A sniper killed General John Sedgwick in the American Civil War. Immediately before being shot, he uttered, They couldn't hit an elephant at this distance. Yo, baller. That's that's probably true. I can see it. Hmm. Just they like couldn't hit an elephant at this distance. Yeah, just right through his brain <laughs> in the middle of talking. True uh, or false? 
dude, I feel like final words were way more common back then. So I feel like this is a little bit. Final words. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, I don't know <laughs> because like it's a, final words are okay, way me, more common. Like, back let then? me justify myself because what does that mean? because I don't think most people get their final words. But I think if you were like in war, people are probably gonna be like. No, he said something super sick. Before he died. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> yeah, to make him sound cool because he was like a general or something. I could see that being. <laughs> Fuck you guys. It makes sense to me. <laughs> I feel like people are a lot more like you're a lot more inclined to say somebody had fight like a dope ass last one liner. Like my, my general right before he fucking had a gun bullet go like through his head. Like a fucking Batman he villain. Said that he said something sick as fuck and then died. Like, <laughs> that doesn't happen like like that usually. <laughs> So Nowadays, he got shot and said really sick thing, and then uh, <laughs> died. <laughs> well, that is true. Did I say it was true? I don't even, I don't even remember. It's true. You s- well, I don't yeah, know I, if you did say it was I, true. I, I did say it was true because I was more likely to believe it. Because you were that. like, "Yeah, that's sick." It is sick. <laughs> yeah, that was true. Let's go. Oh my god. Common Dicky W. Oh, let's go. <laughs> Dicky W in the chat. Oh, Tim Hoyle, you poor son of a bitch. <laughs> Born 1927 and died in 1976. Okay. As a keen fire eater, Hoyle spent many years touring the UK, showing off his fire eating skills. He later added sword swallowing to his routine, and after years of fire eating, he died by the sword. He ruptured a main artery while performing in front of 350 people at a school event in Bridlington, England. Oh, dude. Uh, Dude, That that, that makes me, like, cringe. I ruptured, dude, yeah. So, ah, he's just got a fire sword poking your organs. (laughs) It's horrible. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say that sounds that sounds true. Sounds horrible. That sounds oh, sounds awful, but it definitely sounds true. I think because wasn't that like a big thing back then? Mm-hmm. Like to just do that? Yeah, I yeah. feel like yeah, but like when you could, needed to make like a couple coins to get by, you're like, I'm gonna just perform on the street, bro. A couple to balloons. I'm gonna swallow bricks in the public. <laughs> Give me ten bucks. Ah! <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll, I'm going to say that's true. True? Yeah. It is. It's false. It's false? Damn, that sucks, too, because Tim Hoyle, that sounds like a real name. That like sounds it, a very legitimate sounds name. Sounds totally like a guy that would swallow swords. Yeah, the Hoyle. Oh, are they doing a pun? He's, like, whole. Like, he's going to swallow him whole. Swallow Hoyle. him Hoyle. He's going to uh, swallow him whole. They're trying to get they fucking duped us, those motherfuckers. Damn. I'm mad now. <laughs> I'm going to sue your company for making me stupid. <laughs> All right. Uh, Bridget Driscoll, born 1851, died 1896. Unfortunately, Driscoll was the first pedestrian ever killed by a car in the UK. One witness described the concept car as traveling at a reckless pace, in fact, like a fire engine. The car horn wasn't invented until 1908. First person ever killed by a car in the UK. What was the year of her death? 1851, 18, nine, or 1896 is when she died. 1896? Bridget Driscoll. How, okay, how? when was the turnover to where cars got like actually fast? <laughs> I just imagine well, her getting bumped I by mean, like a... You could get hit by a car going 10 miles an hour and it could kill you if it runs you over. <laughs> I'm, I'm just imagining those cartoony like... <laughs> like when they're putting along, just like hits some girl, and she's like, ah, fuck. <laughs> Falls over and cracks her head and dies. <laughs> she's been vehicular manslaughtered. <laughs> we don't even have a word for it. What does that even she mean? She got in the way of mommy's little scoot about. We should probably <laughs> fell over. <laughs> we should probably make a horn for these vehicles. <laughs> Get out of the way! Yeah, that's what they did <laughs> <laughs> Madam! <laughs> Fucking move, you bitch! If only there was a way to alert her. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't possibly slow down. It's <laughs> going 15 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, I'm saying false, dude. You're saying <laughs> Yeah, I don't think cars uh, legally killed people until the 1900s. What does that mean? I don't know, dude. I'm just saying stuff. Legally killed people? (laughs) Okay, that was true. (laughs) You're 
Egads. <laughs> that sucks. I thought that was false for sure. Your fucking face. She's driving at a reckless pace. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of the way. Miss, please. I'm going recklessly fast. <laughs> There's no possible way for me to slow down, madam. It is not. It is not. Thank you. My fucking cheeks hurt, bro. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, look at what it looks. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> 10 to 30 miles an hour. Yeah, I just, all I can picture in my head is like when the, like a toddler actually runs over their like sibling with those electric yeah. cars and it just like it climbs over them and they're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Dude, that's brutal. She got killed by that. Oh my God. And it's so funny. They're going 10 miles per hour. They ran her over and she was stuck and they're like, oh no, oh, what do fuck. we do? Just dragging her. Oh the my God, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Show chat. Show chat the picture. Of the Put it on about. screen of the little, of the, f not, well, that one's fine too, I guess. The first one was really funny. Damn, y'all really died but. to these? <laughs> Thought you're all built different back then. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. You guys bro. dying to Hot Wheels? <laughs> it's crazy. Okay, um, is it, is it my turn or yours? It's my turn. <laughs> turn. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Dan Anderson. Dan Anderson. Born 1888, died 1920. Okay. An acclaimed author in his native Sweden. Anderson died from hotel cleaning. He was staying in a Stockholm hotel that had used hydrogen cyanide to clear an infestation of bedbugs. The staff neglected to air out the room afterward, and Anderson and another hotel guest were poisoned. Damn, that just sounds sad. true as fuck. Yeah, that just sounds like some shitty company. Yeah, just like oops. That sounds like for sure just like negligence on the. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now I'm gonna say true. It is. It is true. It is true. Yeah, it's, yeah, if there's one Let's thing, go. one thing you can't trick us on is negligence. So it companies. was hydrogen cyanide. Yeah, I didn't even know that cyanide came in hydrogen form. <laughs> that clear an infestation of bed bugs. Dude, breathing Damn. in cyanide. That's a what a nightmare scenario. That's crazy. Damn, that sucks. What a shitty way to go out. Dude, yeah. That's terrible. Okay, let's see. Oh, <laughs> this one literally says Randy Rhodes. Ran uh, Ozzy Osbourne's guitarist. Oh, that's funny. Well, we we all know how we all know how he died. So that's let's true. do it different. Way. <laughs> like, wait a minute. Um that's yeah. Uh Sir Henry Sagrave. Henry Sagrave? Gra yeah. So great, so grave, yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, born, <laughs> born 1896, died 1930. British race car Sagrave was the first person to exceed 200 miles an hour while driving, and the first person to simultaneously hold the record for both land and water speed. While racing, his boat hit a branch and capsized. Sagrave was rescued and awoke to learn he had just set the water water speed record before he succumb to his injuries mr sir henry segrave dude going to crashing at 200 and he didn't instantly become fucking goo dust yeah or mist goo uh pink mist yeah i'm gonna say false i feel like that dude would have been obliterated are you saying false also because the name is Sagrave? That was my first inclination. And then, <laughs> and then when you said he was going 200 miles an hour in a boat yeah. and didn't instantly get pulverized, yeah, it seems fake. Uh, so that one is true. Oh my actually. God, no way. That is a true true one. He got a fucking... That's crazy. 200, he, that's so fucking fast. He got a fast. cowabunga out before he died? That's yeah, nuts. Cowabunga, dude. I fucking did it. He <laughs> broke the record. We, <laughs> I actually I worked with a guy that was on this racing team. Uh, they, his uncle owned this company that was doing the world land speed record, uh -huh. and they had this gal, Jesse Combs. She was uh, piloting it, and it, it had crashed when he was down there. He was a mechanic Damn. on the team. That's There's sucks. a documentary out on it, so if anybody's interested, it's, I think it's called The World's Fastest Woman. Damn. Wild. It's crazy. All right, Austin. Do a couple more. I think it's actually called Combs Over. Combs Over. Ooh. K.K. Downing. Okay. Born 1921, died 1967. Okay. Downing was struck by sepsis. Oh. A toxic Sp response to an infection that leads to rapid organ failure, coma, and then death. It was just a tiny paper cut, but after three weeks in a coma, it was the cut that went on to kill Downing. 
I'm going to say true because you know how fucked up it was before modern medicine? You could literally get a cut somewhere and fucking die. And just be like, say goodbye to your family. Exactly. <laughs> like, All right, honey, I'm going like, to die in two weeks. Like, there's no saving you. I'm going to die a horrible death in about six days, probably. Yeah. <laughs> like, if, if like, uh, a fucking tree branch mm-hmm. scratches your arm too hard, you can just die back then. Yeah, I'm pretty sure back... That's crazy. Back before, like, modern medicine, sepsis was, like, 100% kill rate. <laughs> like, yeah. it was just like, oh, I have sepsis. Bye. <laughs> Peace out, y'all. Yeah, like, what are you going to do about it? Like, nothing you can do. I'm going to say true because, yeah, back then, like... Oh wait, when did he die? What year? Sixty seven nineteen sixty seven. Oh, that's not that long ago. Hmm. Oh yeah, that's actually kinda That changes modern. things. I'm sure we had medicine to treat sepsis in the sixties. He's just like, no, I'm not gonna go. Probably. I I'll, go okay, I'm gonna say false. Now I'm gonna say false. Yeah, I was gonna say everything you're saying is valid, but this is false. It is false. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, good deduction. The year, year I was yeah, like, like okay, if that was 1867, like, I might be more like, hmm. yeah, if this was 1567, 1567. Well, he probably died. <laughs> Paper cut. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> do one more. Let's see. Jesse William Lazar, born 1866, died 1900. He was my age. Wait, is that what? 66, 76, 86. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Lazier, an American physician, tried to prove that yellow fever was transmitted by mosquitoes by letting infected mosquitoes bite him. And he was right. <laughs> Dead right. Uh, false. True or false? I'm going to say false. You're going to say false? Yeah, that's a silly story. It's pretty silly. I'm going to say false. It's pretty silly. It's true. What a dumb fuck. <laughs> for the, dude, for the fucking advancement of modern science, bro. Just use a little mouse. Just use a little mouse. Yeah. But it's not authentic unless it's a human, dude. I mean, I, if a mosquito killed a, a little animal, I'd be like, sounds like it did the thing. <laughs> sounds like it's not a good thing. Yeah, but dude, who does that? That's wild. That's so dumb. Did you ever hear about um, that William Hoff guy who, like, he does like a lot of the breathing stuff and he like stays in like super cold. Yeah, yeah. So he, he like, did some shit where like he got like injected by some type of like really fucked up like sickness disease thing mm-hmm. and then just like it didn't affect him or whatever. Or, like he like cheated it out of him or whatever. Or like it, it didn't fuck him up. Yeah. And so it's like, I don't know why I yeah, brought so that up, like, but it's just, it's kind of kind of wild. He, he like climbed Wim Everest, Hoff. like barefoot. William Hoff. Yeah, Will Hoff. He almost, William Hoff. Wim. Wim Hoff. Yeah. Wim Hoff. He almost lost yeah. his toes. Yeah. What a weird Pretty thing. wild. Pretty wild. You can defeat but, yeah. anything with cold, if you're cold enough. Yeah, you can defeat, yeah. Yeah, with, with, good, with enough breath work, you can defeat That's anything. That's why ice abilities are always so overpowered in anime and stuff. Yeah, right. <laughs> you can That's accomplish you anything it. with ice. Okay, so that is the episode um, of Stupid Deaths or Death Trivia. And uh, how did you like it? Let us know if you liked it. That was fun. That was fun. We have... (laughs) We're going to do our little spinny wheel every time. Uh, we do one of these, so we're gonna have little fun games like that that we're gonna add into the games. the show, the channel. So uh, yeah, uh, Kevin, if you want to bring up the live chat again uh, for us, and if we have any or, uh, any super chats that we might have missed, um, please please let us know, and we can address those. Uh, also, if you're just joining us, thank you so much for hanging out with us. We really do appreciate it. This is our first official live stream in the room or at least our, the setup that we're currently doing it's our first one so thank you for being here uh if you enjoy it let us know we really appreciate it if you uh want to support us even more to keep the lights on we do have a patreon you can go there and you can check it out and we really do appreciate any and all support or if you just want to continue watching us here that is amazing too thank you so much for just being here we really do really do appreciate it this is fun what level is the pegging tier <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that one's only five dollars. Actually, I think that's five. Me and Austin will come to your house and give you a right pegging offer of five ninety five <laughs> a month. You too can get pegged by Regis Billman. All right, um, come let's to your see. Home. <laughs> let's see. We have uh, a ten dollar <coughs> from Daxi Betrayal that says, "Austin, I miss Dicky time." 
Me, oh, De- oh, Dexy, yeah. What's up? Uh, he's, I also I got uh, I got a Would you rather? Okay, okay, we can do a Would you rather? Would you rather run out of toilet paper every time you go number two, or have a sixty percent chance of getting pantsed when you go out in public? That one. Uh, I would just buy a bidet. That too, and then just pick number one. I don't know if that's an option in this scenario. It just says I run out of toilet paper. That's true. So I could just have so a bidet. So you're gonna find a workaround. Yeah, P- yeah. Exactly. So then the the workaround for the second one would just be like never wear use a, a, a be- belt. Never use the restroom in public. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would definitely say the second one. That one that one seems worse. Yeah, for do the sure. first one with, Dude, with the bidet. There was a guy in high school that got the worst pantsing I'd ever seen. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> the worst, the worst <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he got lifted the up worst. with a wedgie and the, then super oh, pants. No. So check, check this out. Here's here's a setup. My Damn. buddy's in gym class, right? Okay. He was, the guy was he was a bully asshole type dude, and my buddy was kind of sick of it. So we so should feel good about this pantsing. It's it's good. Mm. So they were doing volleyball day, so they had the nets, right? You know, there's little squares, right? Yeah. Up the up the nets, it's a net. So he goes, hey, John, come here. He's like, I'll race you to the top. by You have to weave your hands into the net, uh, and the first one to the top wins. So you got to go go through a square, skip the square, go up. And so he did it super slow. That sounds on, like a setup. For he, sure. did it, he did it trap so slow hands. on purpose that <laughs> yeah. his hands got caught like a Chinese <laughs> finger trap. Hey, trap your hands real quick. Pantsed him in front of the entire gym class. Damn. It was rough. That's pretty brutal. That is very brutal. That's crazy. Yeah, uh, but I would definitely prefer the 60% chance of pantsing over uh, never having toilet paper when you use the bathroom. That seems terrible. It does sound annoying. It does sound very terrible. Yeah, you have uh, paper towels, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> what out. about dude wipes? The, the stream is sponsored by... <laughs> Yesterday's sponsor. <laughs> Yesterday's sponsor, dude. No. Um, okay, so uh, sweet. I hope you all are having a fun hang with us. And uh, what's our next segment that we have, Kevin? Or Schmegment. Metal trivia quiz. Okay, so um, I saw. Oh wait, we just got uh, another super oh, chat. Justin with the big dog. Justin was at Allbacher. Is that what that says? Yep. Uh, nine dollars ninety nine cents. I fucking love you, Jared and Dicky. Love you too, brother. Much love. Uh, if you can, uh, I just did a. What did it say? If you can, I just did a podcast on Sleep Token podcast. Check it out. If not, I get it. Sleep Token I'm podcast. Hell yeah. Podcast, honestly, sleep sleep talking podcast. Sleep talking. Um, awesome. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Sweet. Thank you so much for sharing. Is it just on your channel or what? I'm assuming so. Uh, thank you for the $9.99. Really do appreciate that. Uh, hope you're doing well, my guy. All right. So we found this quiz here. Uh, we're, we might not do the whole thing because I think it's a little bit long. But we wanted to test our metal. Uh, Kevin, if you want to oh. bring it up on the stream. Um, <clears throat> bear with us. There it is. Okay. So this is, can you survive the hellacious heavy metal quiz? Hellacious. Okay. So, uh, number one, play along with us in chat. What was arguably the first metal band in existence? Was it Judas Priest, Black Sabbath, Motorhead, or Deep Purple? Was, is Deep Purple considered a metal band? I don't, I don't think know. Deep Purple is a metal band. Yeah, that seems like a... Like a red herring. <laughs> I don't know about you'd that. Be like, oh, how educated are you? Did you I know mean, this maybe. Band? Um, uh, I'm going to say Black Sabbath because I, I believe that is the correct answer. I feel like every time I hear that, that's somebody's like, did you know they were the ones? <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, yeah, I, w- I was going to also say Black Sabbath, but I'm scared of Deep Purple. <laughs> All right, Kevin, let's see. What is it? Black Sabbath? It is Black Sabbath. Yes, with lead singer Ozzy Osbourne and guitarist Tony Naomi. It was first metal band uh, identified as such. Hell yeah. And uh, do you know that uh, he lost like the tips of his fingers to Tony Naomi? guy the guitar player that's kind of a popular uh popular is that knowledge a, but was he the one who lost in like the work accident yeah he, he created like his own tone because of yeah. It. yeah 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 all right uh next question which instrument has been the key to the heavy metal sound i mean all of it right keyboards bass guitar drums uh, probably electric, electric guitar <laughs> probably electric guitar <laughs> yeah. but all of it honestly mm-hmm. like every single one um i'm sure they probably put electric guitar right um so yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll do electric guitar all of the above, but, but all of the above electric guitar 
for sure. Um, it is the weapon of choice, they say. Um, all right, next. Uh, in one of the classic heavy metal feuds of all time, why does Dave Mustaine hate Metallica? The classic heavy <laughs> he metal found feud. Them boring to hang out with. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty funny. He doesn't like their music that he wrote a lot of. Um, he was kicked out. He was kicked out of the band. That's why. Yeah, even if sure. you didn't know, I feel like that's the only one that makes sense. Like logic. Metallica like pirated some of his band members. I think it's them. that one. You think it's that one? Um, all right. Next, uh, while the band, while this band is seen more as the granddaddy of punk, their take no prisoners attitude and harder rocking song style were blueprints for the earlier versions of metal. Who were they? The Kinks, the Zombies, the Stylistics, or the Spiral Staircase? I'm gonna say the Kinks. Because I don't really know the other three. I, I've heard of the zombies. I don't have a clue about the spiral staircase. I feel like I've heard the name spiral spiral staircase. Spiral like staircase sounds like a before. Magic the Gathering card, <laughs> right? The spiral. I play the spiral uh, staircase. I, I'm, I'm down to do the kinks. That sounds. I'm gonna say fair. kinks, Kevin. Yep, the Kinks. Nice. Yep, I only <clears throat> guessed that also because I know Van Halen covered uh, "You Really Got Me." Mm-hmm. Um, which oh, that's I should have right. put yeah, in that. that I should have put in the fucking video. The you really yeah. got me. It was a it was a Kinks, really it was a kinks song. Me, uh, um, yeah. <laughs> Next up, uh, pe- people argue that this band is either early metal or the heaviest blues rock proto metal band. What band was this? Alm- Almond Brothers, ZZ Top, the Yardbirds, or Led Zeppelin? I'm gonna say Led Zeppelin for sure because I don't think the other three are considered. Uh, any type of metal band, so probably Z- Led Zeppelin. ZZ might maybe Z- no, I don't know. Well, maybe like the blues rock is like. But Led Zeppelin, I feel like for a lot of people would consider like back then mm-hmm. they probably would have called Led Zeppelin like a, a kind of a metal. Let's do let's do Zepp. Let's do Zeppi. I'm gonna say Led Zeppi Leppi. Yep, Led Zeppelin. All right. Correct. All right, moving on. Which punk influenced? Heavy metal band would become one of the big influences of thrash and speed metal. Anthrax, Biohazard, Helmet, Type O negative. Anthrax. Yeah, for I was sure. say it was probably Anthrax. Yeah, type O negative. <laughs> September Sun. <laughs> Fast as fuck. Just like, boy. Uh, just like goth yeah. rock. Um, yeah, Anthrax. Yes, <laughs> one of the big peasy. four, baby. <clears throat> this heavy metal band is well known for their unusual time signatures, drumming patterns, and melodic arrangements. They are also fans of the Melvins and King Crimson. <laughs> Unnecessary addition of detail. <laughs> yeah, they right. also like this band. They also <laughs> like my band, the Melvins. <laughs> Is it Tool? The guy writing the article. Uh, yeah, I'm going to yeah. say Tool for sure. They're the one that's known for their weird time signatures. I was going to say, they kind of all have weird stuff that right, they do. But, but not I guess, like famously, yeah. though. Drum patterns, for sure, I would say. Tool. Yeah, yeah, people sure learned tool. the word Fibonacci from Tool. <laughs> yeah, 100% Tool. Uh, Rammstein is an internationally popular band is an internationally popular bands plural is a popular from band. Germany that has at times been labeled as industrial heavy metal what is their favorite stage effect probably the cock that shoots cum fire I'm, <laughs> fire light shows video projections or lots of smoke now if that said lots of cum I would probably lots say that nut. one lots of big juicy nut no, but, uh, uh, probably fire fire yeah for sure fire 100% um, just oh, yeah. light shows. Yeah, you know have, they're, they're light shows. Um, have you all, seen their box it. set? Mm, not in a while. Have you seen their cock chat, set? Chat. If you're curious, go look up Ramstein's box set. Box set. Interesting. And put what you see in the comments. Uh, have you been to his restaurant, Hamstein? <laughs> Okay, next. Uh, who is the f- who is this famous blues guitarist whose love of long live guitar solos influenced heavy metal? Robert Johnson, Gary Moore, Eric Clapton, or Jack Back? Mm. <laughs> Fucking Gary Moore, maybe. I know that Eric Clapton influenced Eddie Van Halen. If you want to look at it that way, well, maybe the guitar solos is probably the clue there. So maybe it is that. I don't know. I would say Gary Moore, or Eric Clapton. Gary Clapton. Mm, do Gary? Do do Gary Moore? I'm, I'm you want to do Gary Moore? I want to do Eric. You want to do Eric? Okay, let's 50, do Eric. 50. Let's do Eric. I'm going to go Robert Johnson, but let's do Eric. 
Eric, Ooh. nice. See, I that's that's the clue. I knew that it influenced yeah, Eddie the, Van the Halen. Guitar solo thing. Yeah, that was a great deduction there. Yeah. Um, yeah. When it comes to musical forms, most people cannot believe that metal is influenced by this musical style. What is it? Classical pop, rap, and punk. Well, nowadays, I would say all of it. Because pop is like metalcore, rap well, is like new metal, punk is yeah. hardcore, it's also, and classical is just Ingve Malmsteen. It seems silly to be like, like one punk? of these. I couldn't imagine them being influenced by punk. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. It's only one of them. Um, most people strange. cannot believe that metal is influenced by this music style. Maybe it is classical then, because that's way more <sighs> shocking. Than I mean, punk. I guess classical would be like the OG influence right. for metal. But and I could see some, I could them. see some like you know some college student writing this and being like, they classical really that's quite respectable. I'm gonna say classical for sure. Yeah. I think they're gonna put classical, but I think it should be punk. It's yeah, punk or all of them. All of them. So, yeah. Like yeah, they pull yeah metal. That's the cool thing about metal. It pulls from literally everything and creates its own little sub genres. Yeah, lasagnas. Just we lasagnas. have the neoclassical stuff like Ingve and. Right. Yeah. Sub lasagna. Oh, I told you never to invoke around me. <laughs> You're invoking spirits on me. Uh, this band started out as one of the big players in the grunge scene, but has always been considered to be a heavy metal band, or at least heavily influenced by heavy metal. Which band? Nirvana, Smashing Ugh. Pumpkins, Pearl Jam, or Soundgarden? Heavy metal. Maybe Smashing Pumpkins because they, they, they were on like Guitar Hero and shit, and they like I'm, have the electric guitar. You know, like I could see Normies being like, "Yeah, that's like heavy metal." I'm gonna say Soundgarden. Soundgarden. I'm gonna say Soundgarden. Soundgarden. Yeah, it'd be really weird for them. Maybe even Pearl think. Jam too, because not heavy metal though. But well, maybe though. I'm gonna because he kind of hmm. yells and shit, and they have like electric guitar. You got to think about the wave that they just came out of. When this was relevant. When was the... What, does, there's no time frame. Hmm. They were in the... Well, you got Nirvana, Smash well, Pumpkins. Big started out as one of the big players. Well, you had, you had the hair metal scene right before this. All this killed hair metal. I'm going to say sound... I mean, Nirvana was clearly the biggest grunge band. I don't even know if Smashing Pumpkins was considered a grunge band. It, like big in the grunge, I don't know. They were they've always been kind of like a rock band, right? They, they, they have like dark, Pearl Jam's like kind like of grunge rock. for sure. I, I'm gonna say Soundgarden. I don't know. What do you what do you think? I don't. Know, I'm torn on this one's the hardest one for me because I feel like I can argue myself into any answer right now. Yeah. Um, but which one started and was just big instantly in grunge? I mean, Nirvana. Nirvana is the biggest grunge band in the of all time, for sure. Soundgarden was too. Soundgarden Not as big as dude. Nirvana is one of the biggest bands. But heavy metal. I feel like I could. In eternity. I've never heard anybody call Soundgarden heavy metal. That's the part that's tripping me out. Hmm. I'm just. I just, I'm gonna think Soundgarden, but but. I'm torn. Uh, I'm gonna go wild card. I'm just gonna say Nirvana. Okay. Um. Just click one. I guess one click of the two, click and then we'll see. You both did. Yeah. Chris Cornell. Yeah, that's what I figured. Cause I was like. Yeah. Okay. Soundgarden. Let's do a couple more. Uh. Before the birth of metal. Which psychedelic guitarist and singer heavily influenced the musical language of heavy metal? Keith Richards, Eddie Cochran, and Jimi Hendrix, or Eric Clapton. All these fucking questions. Who? Which I mean, thing psychedelic guitarist. They gave it away by saying psychedelic guitarist. I mean, Jimi Hendrix, I think for sure. Like, yeah. if you just said guitarist, that would have actually been a more mm-hmm. difficult question. But psychedelic. psychedelic like, no. oh, he did drugs once, so uh, he's definitely a psychedelic guitarist. Jimothy Hendrix. Watch, I'm wrong. Uh, uh, Jimmy, I'm going to say Jimi Hendrix for sure. Yeah. Um, too easy. All right, let's see. What music can be said to be the mother of heavy metal mixing with rock music? Folk music, marching music, polka, or the blues? Uh, probably the blues. I'm gonna say folk. Or folk. I'm gonna say folk music. Folk I'm gonna say polka because it's got that it's got that skank beat in it. I'm gonna folka. say folk because like I feel like folk music goes towards like Viking metal and like Celtic metal and like the indie stuff and like that because you have like two s- sections of metal. Mm-hmm. You have like the the culty like European stuff like the Viking, the black and the you know the, the Celtic and the, all that shit and then you, then you have like the American that's very like metalcore and, and hardcore and new metal and so I'm going to say folk. I'm going to say folk. Oh no, the blues. Oh. Okay. Now I feel dumb. Okay. Um I've never heard that term. 
Uh, what music can be said to be the mother? Okay, good to know. Uh, what music, what musical from the late seventies and eighties would later influence and merge with the heavy metal sounds to make a subgenre known for a shorter, high energy songs, jazz, punk, new wave, neo mod. Oh, punk. 70s, I think punk. 80s? Punk for sure. Shorter, high energy songs uh, to me is punk. For sure. It's fucking jazz, yeah, for sure. Jazz is like jazz yeah. and metal would be like Yeah, I think it's punk. Cha- not Sean. What's the one we're thinking of? Hmm. Yeah, click it. Punk. For sure. Noise. That's where hardcore comes from, bruh. Uh what is this cultural influence on heavy metal that some of the gr- of the genre's own bands hate? Uh, every single one, <laughs> particularly those more influenced by punk music, theater, surf, non-vocal, or drum and march. Cultural influence on heavy metal. Probably. Oh uh, wait, what? Hate. Some of the genre's own bands hate. Um. Fuck. Uh, so what? So what, surf metal? I don't really even know what that would be. Surf music. I know, but like. Cultural influence on heavy metal that people know. in heavy metal don't like. Maybe non-vocal music. I, I mean, maybe surf because it's saying particularly those more influenced by punk, which surf could be more punky, like Tony Hawk's sure. Pro Skater Two, kind of like got that like rancid punk ska thing mixed. I mean, you know, I was gonna say too. I was like, the only thing I could think now that I'm thinking about it, maybe the theater even because that one I could see people hating. That and be like, what the fuck is this, dude? What are is they, this shit? Why are they being theatrical now? I'm gonna say surf. I'm gonna say surf music. Surf and turf. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go non non vocal. Non vocal. What is it? Oh, it theater. was theater. <laughs> Interesting. Funny. Heavy metal had influences taken from theater. It's part of why heavy metal music relies on the idea. Of creating or using myths for the band's image and sound. So Sleep Token. And why some heavy metal music actually works well with more with movie and TV soundtracks. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. Epic. Let's do a couple. Let's do two with more. With that said, I am officially campaigning to get Scion the Blade on the new Blade movie. That'd be sick. Well, let's help. Yeah, get the Funky Town <laughs> cover on Blade. Uh, let's do funky the funky town. Play, play that funky music. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Uh, which of the early heavy metal bands had the dubious distinction at one point of being the loudest band ever? The dubious Judas distinction. <laughs> Judas Priest, Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, Deep Purple. I'm gonna say Led loudest. Zeppelin. I'm gonna say Led Zeppelin. I feel like they just like were obnoxiously loud at all times. I think I feel like there's something tickling in my brain that of like a, an article I peered at once that's leading me towards Judas Priest right now. You Judas Priest, you think? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna guess Judas Priest. I'm gonna guess Led Zeppelin. Deep, Deep purple. purple. They've been there, that's been on there five times. They're like, pick it, come on. Please. Deep purple. Wait, go back, go back. Deep Purple was in the 1975 edition of the Guinness Book of World Records as the loudest band in the world. What? After a thundering 1972 concert at London's Rainbow Theater, there was truly smoke on the water that day. That's wild. You know, they, they, imagine that riff being the loudest riff you've ever heard. <laughs> All right, let's see the last, uh, last one. What is the name of this? What is the name of this band seen as a heavy metal proto group thanks to their reinterpretation of Eddie Cochran's Summertime Blues? Big Brother and the Holding Company, <laughs> The Zombies, The Who, or Blue Cheer? Sorry, the Big Brother and the Holding Company? I actually don't what know. What the fuck is that? I actually don't S- know. Somebody fucking c- control v at the wrong time and put a Google search in here for a local company. <laughs> I- I'll say The Who just because I don't know. I'm, I don't know what yeah, Blue Cheer is. I don't know a, Big Brother. I'm going Big Brother, dude. I got a, a crazy thing i heard okay what is it 
blue, it was cheer, blue cheer, arguably in that rough boundary between blues rock and heavy metal, but the blue collar aggression they showed in their version of summertime blues, as well as the radical arrangement shifts provide a historical prologue to heavy metal music. Imagine if it was a historical prologue. <laughs> Just imagine that. <laughs> oh my god. Dude, I'm digging all the ads on this website. <laughs> There's so many fucking ads on this site, it's dude. It's like stressing me out a little bit. I think we should get like like 2%. Do you want to watch Chowchilla, Max, Coraline, <laughs> Lord of the Rings, Weight Loss? Do you want to play TF2? Do you want to click on Facebook? Do you want to share it in your email? <laughs> no, bitch, leave me alone, dude. <laughs> I want to do any of that. I just want to learn who was influenced by who for the 80th time. <laughs> Which late band influenced another band? Dude, Deep we should get like purple. 2% of all those ads on this for showing it on Diggy Dining yeah, Show. Yeah, Max, we're coming for yeah, you. Yeah, we're coming for you, uh, HBO Max. All right, uh, can we pull up chat again, Kevin? Do a little little, little five-minute break. So that is, uh, that is a little metal uh, trivia history. Oh, my God. <laughs> What the fuck what was that? Should... Oh. You're fucking fired. Oh my god. Sorry. Yikes! I have no clue why those all started playing. Let's, uh, let's delete brain. those. Sorry, guys. That was so loud. We joked about dude. that before the show, <laughs> it and it happened. Kokitis oh claims god. another. Oh, now that I've had an aneurysm. Go to bluechew.com. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for watching that one. That was uh, Metal Trivia. If you liked it, let us know. And uh, we'll continue on that in the new episode. Oh, my God. I can't believe there wasn't that a was so single, loud. Well, not one single Nurgle. Nothing about Nurgle. Not a single Nurg. Oh, also, did you know that Gorgoroth, apparently, for, like, the longest time, they would not publish their... Or, I don't know, maybe they still aren't, but they, they like, they had... They didn't, or they still are not publishing the lyrics to their songs. Why? I don't know. To, like... You know, it would be crazy if he was, like, confessing de- in detail with murders he's been doing that, for years. Dude... Until he's Dude, gone. that's a theory. And then he lets him out. That's all a theory. Out. It's I was the Zodiac killer. Yeah. <laughs> and I still <laughs> fucking <laughs> am. I had to change my whole fucking look. Oh my god. <laughs> Dude, that was so fucking loud, bro. We gotta make sure that doesn't happen again. Yo, can we get a wellness check yep. on our headphone users? Hey, our headphones users are good, dude. Are you guys All okay? We're can- really sorry, but to be fair, at the beginning of the stream, we did say this is going to be a shit show because it was our first stream ever. <laughs> and all things considered, the fact that we now made you all deaf is probably just the least of your worries. Do you so. consent to ear trauma? We can give Do you, you consent the best. to ear trauma. Do we want to give them a little ASMR? Xbox off. <laughs> <laughs> the stream just shuts down. <laughs> Fuck! Uh, let's see. It looks like we got a, uh, what is that? PRB 301. Is that what that says? Uh, 499 super chat. Thank you so much for the super chat. PRB he says, love. uh, what are y'all opinions on sleep token? I kind of answered this earlier. Do you want to give your opinion? Uh, it's, it's horny. It makes sense. It's a great gateway. They've got a couple of heaters with some melodies. I think the lyrics are a little cringe and corny sometimes personally, but, but he's dangling like code. Cuts. I'm also not who he's trying to get bussy wet for. So I get it. It's not for me in that way, but they they got some some sick tracks. Jaws, if you haven't heard Jaws, one of their first songs before they they blew up. It's beautiful. I talked to so many people, they say Jaws, Sleep Token, best song. Best song. Best song. No cold cuts. Not a single cold cut to be found. No one was I walked in like here, I said, cuts. why are there so many cold cuts? <laughs> <laughs> why is this man dangling like cold cuts? There's meats. I said, bologna, uh, caponata. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number one, what is he doing? Uh, was that a cancro special? I said, I don't know him. <laughs> I come to Jersey Mike's all the time. They say, wow, look at this guy coming to Jersey Mike's again. <laughs> I say, hey, shut up. <laughs> I'm just here to get I'm my just, fucking sandwich. I want it Mike's way. I don't know what to tell you. This is the only place. Jersey Mike's is the only one that does it hey, right. I am talking to Italian Trumpy. <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, I think I I think they're fine. Yeah, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, sleep token. <laughs> Um, I think Sleep Token's fine. I love the lore behind it. I like that they made it to like as a musical token to like this fake god. They made, like that's pretty cool that they have a whole 
like lore to their band. I think that's pretty interesting and an underappreciated part of them. Yeah. Uh, they do be fucking on stage, which is strange, but uh, each Wait, their they own. Wait, w- they're doing what now? I don't know. They just be getting horny on that stage, man. I don't. I haven't seen their. They be lot. grinding on each other and stuff. On each other. And the guitarist will like lay down, and Vessel will like mount him. Oh. And then spit in his mouth and call him a little dirty token. No, he's no, he okay, doesn't. I made up that last part, but, <laughs> <laughs> but the rest of it's true. <laughs> they're trying to get those TikTok clips, dude. And they, and they work. And they are, yeah. Damn. They're smart. They're playing the game. Oh my god. They found a way to make the algorithm horny. <laughs> okay. Um. Let's see. Uh, another super chat. Which one are we on here? Um. Which one are we on, Kevin? Jamie Ruiz with a dollar ninety nine. Thank you so much, Jamie. We appreciate that. What uh, BB album is your fave? Mine's Phobia, uh, Breaking Benjamin album. Fave? Oh, mm, probably I, also Phobia. Phobia is sick. I think uh, We Are Not Alone is mm. so good. Wire. A little bit. I don't know if I'd say it underrated. It's just older. They have some fucking so cold is such a good fucking song. Even the one before that, Saturate, was so mm-hmm. good. Yeah, they that have, album was so sick. Um, yeah, they're one of the few bands that I feel like they their albums are always like good listens all the way through. Oh yeah, they don't have like oh I skipped that one. It's just like yeah. oh, I forgot how much I liked this one. Ember, I think that's what it's called. Ember was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, Ember sick or the the dark before dawn one. I would probably Dance say with the devil. Dance one. with the devil was phobia. Um, I Some would thugs. say probably, yeah, We Are Not Alone or Phobia. Those two are just like, they're also like my childhood. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's like, I'm a little books. bit biased. You Red know? Cold River. That's also a great song. The, the thing is, is like, he's such a sick songwriter that he probably writes for an album like 40 songs and then picks 10. That's great. Just because he's got Because so many. they're the 10 best, which is like really how you should be doing it. Um, oh. but yeah, this is so sick all around, but Beautiful. yeah, we are not alone or phobia. I would agree with you on that one. Um, let's see who's next. Evil Skittles again. Evil Skittles coming in off the 10 much love, dollars. Boy. Thank you so much. Uh, what is a dream super group that you would want to be a part of? Uh, so you play the instrument of your choice and think of famous musicians to fill in the rest deceased or alive, whatever you want. Interesting. You take this one first. Okay. Oh man. Mm-hmm. Okay, dude, I think that Luke Holland would be sick to work oh, with. Fuck you, dude. As like a drummer lockdown because for sure. He seems like he's a great like person that could synergize with like anybody mm-hmm. and just make the dopest shit ever. So Luke uh, Holland. Luke Holland for drums. On drums. I'm I'll be on vocals. That's I'll obviously. be on vocal. Uh hmm. Okay. Guitar and bass here. Let's see. Uh, dude, I'm just wild card. I'm pulling Davy from YouTube for Davy five hundred four. Davy five on bass, just because that's like, what the fuck are you talking? about? That would about? also be funny on stage because he's like <laughs> seven foot four, right? And, he's just <laughs> and then what would two sick guitarists be? Um, uh, yeah, oh, that's a tough one. How about no, no, no? I don't want to. God. That's a tough one. There's so many good guitarists. Deep in the brain. Who could work well? I don't know. Okay. Mike Shinoda as a wild card on uh, keyboard. As a DJ? Key, key, Mike keyboard Shinoda? DJ. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then... Oh God. This is the hardest. The guitarists are the hardest part. There's so many good, good guitarists. Yeah. Oh, the dude from Unprocessed. Oh, manual. Manual, though, yeah. dude. I would that would he'd be crazy. The chickety 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 yeah. check. Yeah. He would be awesome to work with. Him on him on lead guitar and then uh Right, yeah, just a friend. <laughs> just be like, you wanna come live out this rocker dream, <laughs> Let's dude? Let's do it, bro. Yeah, and and uh and fucking dark watch Jacob, I guess. Nice. Or, or Jared, you get on there, dude. Okay. That'd be even better. Fucked up. Play your rhythm guitar. Um <laughs> Okay, as a vocalist, I would probably... Oh, man, there's so many. I would probably do something like... Oh, fuck. The du- fucking... The vocalist of... um, What? Enter Shikari? Not Enter Shikari. Um, sort of like, fuck yeah. Either, well, he's good, too, but... Uh, 
What is that? He sounds angry as fuck. What is his name? He sounds not Enter Shikari. It's um similar to that though. Yeah, fuck. Enter Shikari. Uh, angry sound. Is it Enter Shikari? No, it's not Enter Shikari. No, he doesn't sound very angry. It's a dude. It's like fucking. <laughs> He's like got this crazy scream. Uh, Kubla Khan. Oh, the yeah, okay, the, okay. Yeah. Kubla Khan on vocals. That yeah. guy sounds crazy. Matt, or Matt Honeycutt. Or Alex Terrible. That guy's Ooh, crazy. The, dude, them together would be. Cool, Those two dude. together would the be fucking battle sick all the time. Um, drums. I agree with you with Luke Holland. Right. For sure, Luke Holland's insane. Or Samus. Six six Samus. Samus would be cool. It's crazy. Or dude, who's good. that the, that Spanish drummer that's blown up? Oh, L S. Yeah, he's like the craziest drummer I've ever he's seen. He's insane. Yeah, he's crazy. Um, I feel like I'd be, be a, awesome. I'd be a waste of a collab with him. Um, <laughs> he's too good. Chris <laughs> Turner, Ocean's Eight, Alaska. Oh, that'd be fun. That too. guy, yeah, he's awesome. so good. He's insane. Um, he's bass. Who would I do bass? Uh, Andrew Baina on bass. <laughs> <laughs> I don't okay. know. Sure. Um, uh, fuck Charles Berth Berthed. Okay, he's a good bass player. I can't. I don't know that many bass players. I mean, use a yeah, Davey. Force, force a guitarist to play bass. Yeah, force a guitar player <laughs> to play Jason bass. Make Jason Richardson yeah. play bass for you. Oh, Jason Richardson on guitar. <laughs> Amazing. Yes, Jason Richardson on guitar for sure. Um. Corey from Trivium on guitar. Oh, Corey's good so pick. Good so pick. sick. Um. And wait, I have to do something. Uh, <laughs> I'll be the promoter. Yeah, no, I'll, be I'll, the manager. I, I'll be the camera guy. I'll be the tour manager. For and the I'll, I'll be the tour manager, and I'll and I'll make sure that they get on stage. Um, and they all join Scion or Sid from Slipknot on DJ because you said DJ. Yeah, Sid from Slipknot on DJ would be fucking sick. That's a hard cool. question. There's so many good musicians. I know. Out I'm just there. like getting excited about this thing that's never gonna happen. I know. Like, like, we got a tour now. Let's go. I can't waste my answer. <laughs> Um, okay, let's do uh, a couple more here. The Deaf Musician with Five Yero. Thank you so much. Uh, that is that sound fuck was so loud. My hearing came back. Thanks, guys. <laughs> we we did it. Thank I'm, you, Kevin. I'm, I'm sorry, and you're welcome. Out miracle. Thank you, right. Kevin, for blasting us. Uh, Jordan <laughs> Hotchkiss. Hotchkiss. Uh, with four ninety nine, <coughs> which band do you consider to be the one that got you really into rock, metal, etc.? Mine was Bullet for My Valentine when I was thirteen. Uh, for me personally, it was definitely like um, Kill Switch Engage, As I Lay Dying, uh, Norma Jean, um, Atreyu, Linkin Park, Hybrid Theory, POD. Oh, nice. Mm, Papa Roach, Disturbed. All that shit. All that shit when yeah. I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah, mine was a drowning pool into a Treyu true combo. Okay. Just like I heard bodies and was like, what is this? And Do you remember <laughs> the movie The One with Jet Li? Yeah. So they had that they had the let the bodies to the floor mm-hmm. or bodies. And then they had um a Papa uh, uh Blood Brothers Papa Roach song. Okay. Which was fuck I still love that song so much. Um, they had Down With The Sickness. Jesus. Dude, they had so many good songs that I, I, I watched that movie, and that was like kind of when I was getting into mm-hmm. like heavy rock, more like... I used to watch the movie all the time. Yeah. It's a good-ass movie. And dude, a good movie. And I would just be like, when, when the fucking intro of Blood Brothers kicks in, I'm just like, as a guitar player, it's like... I'm just like, oh, yes, let's go. It's so sick. I feel you, dude. The... The moment, uh, Hand of Blood by uh, Bullet from Valentine dude. is like to this day probably one of my favorite. Four words to choke upon. My favorite Are you riffs kidding of all me? time, dude. Hand of Blood just goes so fucking hard. What's dude. that one? The Poison? The poison? Poison? Poison's, dude. Poison's, poison's good. Bullet? That, yeah, Bullet was massive for getting me into metal as well. <laughs> Um, what was the one scream name? Fire. Oh yeah, that was the, that was on Guitar Hero. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. <sighs> that song was so. Or uh, we awaking the demon, dude. That was the waking the demon, so good. Back yeah, dude, bullet, flow. bullet's still sick, but like those early songs, fuck, man, mm-hmm. so good. Okay, um, let's see. Ty, is that say Tyler? Tyler Dactyl. Tyler yeah. Dactyl, five dollars. What order would you rank System of a Down's albums? Well, personally, I don't yeah. know all of them yeah. well enough to Pull rank them in order. Pull the discog real quick. How many do they have? Like Quite three or four? Or do they have more than that? I feel like they dropped a few bangers and then just disappeared. I'll see you guys later. Yeah, I'm not. A, I'm not actually super familiar with their albums. 
It's usually like the main like five. Okay, so we'll just yeah. rank those five. Uh, toxicity, system oh, of down, man. hypnotize. Toxicity's great. Hypnotize oh, is great. Is out. Oh my god, these are all good. Mesmerize. Um. Hmm. I I don't know. I do not fuck. know their discography well enough to rank them like that. Which one is? Because I probably only know like maybe ten System of a Down songs off the top of my head. Give us your number one song. No uh, album. Oh, f- I I don't know. Oh, you don't I know don't which know. ones are. I don't which. know. Gotcha. Like I never grabbed oh, this like a mine. System album and like was. Mesmerize is my favorite. Mesmerize. Mesmerize is my favorite. Then probably Toxicity. Yeah. And then. What's the song? What's the album that has sugar on it? I believe that's or whatever the, uh, that song is. Mesmerize. Is it Mesmerize? Yeah. Okay. Well, then I'll, I'll agree with you. I, that's the one album that I I think I listened or to. Or it might be the one right before it. Actually, or no, it's the one before that. One before it's, it. Uh, Hypno, Hyp, no, Steelus album. It's from Steelus album. Okay. Two thousand two. Then that's the one that I know most of. Is that one? But yeah, great band. All great records. Yeah, good shit. Good shit. Um, let's see. Oh, we got a lot. Oh, we got a lot to catch up on here. Combo. Um, can you sco- scoot up a little bit more, Kev? Uh, Doyle Collette with the $5. What band slash bands are a guilty pleasure of yours to listen to? Uh, like all your friends would tease you if they found out you listened to said band. Well, I don't really hang out with people that tease me for what I listen to, yeah, but... I'm pretty unapologetic. I guess it would be like... It would be like... Like 8-bit... Dungeon synth RPG music. <laughs> <laughs> you say that every time, and I always forget. And it cracks me up. Yeah, like, oh, like, that's right. You're just be bumping fantasy tunes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like if it's from like an old school SNES soundtrack, I'm all in, dude. That's like that's like I love listening to that shit. That or just like like a note for like an hour, like just a oh. note. What? <laughs> Playing uh, eight hours of Plankton screaming. <laughs> like one note with like a massive cavern of reverb. Mm-hmm. Or Celtic music. I love old school Celtic Irish music. Love it. I fall asleep to that shit all the time. Bro, I've been, pl- I've been bumping It Girl. It Girl? What's that? <laughs> that, that bitch. You know I'm sexy. <laughs> you know that one? No, I don't. Don't call, just text me. I don't know that one. Uh, 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 I did my, listen to that new, that wolf. Girl shit. I did listen to that newer Doja Cat song a lot. Bitch, I said what I said. Oh, yeah. Which I don't listen to her, but that song got stuck in my head for sure. He was bumping. Was bumping it. Um, PRB301 uh, with a dollar ninety nine says, have you guys heard the new Orphan EP? Yeah. Heavy boy. Of course I have, dude. Austin has. Yeah, it's awesome. Yes. Hourglass is one of my favorite songs this year. Hell Yeah. Uh, Jamie Ruiz, dollar ninety nine. Have you heard "Always and Inertia" on YouTube? Always, Always and, and inertia. inertia. No, I have not. It's a weird name. Let's check it out. Uh, Virtual Boy with a five. Yeah, thank you though. Uh, y'all fuck with Star Set. I do, okay, yeah. Star Set is actually pretty sick. They're kind of they're kind of weird, but they're they're pretty cool. Yeah, they got some nice like like rocker like kind of like stony rocker jams. Hell yeah, a little psychedelic maybe. Yeah, I haven't I haven't listened to it. Um, Daniel Hollinsworth, five dollars. Been watching for years. Thank you so much for watching. You're both so damn hilarious. With that said, would you rather get chased by Nurgle or sniff Danny DeVito's underboob? Mm. Um, could you outrun Nurgle? Do you think? I think I might be able to outrun Nurgle. I think I'd be laughing too hard. Yeah. <laughs> like I'd have a great pace, and I'd be like, Nurgle's chasing. Me. <laughs> Why the fuck is Nurgle chasing me? And I'd turn around, and he's like. <laughs> I gotta go. I don't want to smell uh, anyone's underboob. Yeah, I, so. I, I want to meet Danny DeVito, but I feel like if it was under the condition I had to sniff his tit, that he would not respect me, and I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't want that. That wouldn't be good. I would hate to be none respected by Danny DeVito. <laughs> I'd probably get chased by nerds. Facts. Um, trolley Omega Pole. Bless you. Says, uh, thanks. Thank you for the two. Says, ska favorite porn star, favorite cat breed. Uh, real um, big fish is tight. Real big fish is cool. I, is would you call rancid ska? Yeah. yeah so ran, I listened to rancid quite a bit. The mighty up. mighty boss tones. I listen. Huh, mighty mighty boss tones. I don't know that one. No. No. I, I'm not a ska guy. I listen to some. It's fine. Oh, I thought we named two porn stars. Oh. Real big fish and rancid. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we got to ska yet. <laughs> Fuck off. 
Uh, favorite cat breed? Oh, this dude, probably Siamese cats. Siamese, interesting. Yeah, they're beautiful. Interesting. They're majestic. They got those blue eyes that probably die young, which sucks. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm himself. gonna say, pa- I'm gonna say panther. I'm gonna say black panther. Oh, <laughs> we can do that. It's a cat. That's yeah, fair. Oh, uh, we're thinking, thinking domestic outside, cats. I was thinking about. Jared's thinking specified. bigger. Yeah, like yeah. a like a big fl- or a white panther. Dude, that'd be crazy. A, getting a jaguar or something, or like you said, a panther would be yeah. nuts, dude. Pa- black panthers are so cool. <laughs> you're looking. walking around your house in the middle of the night, and there's just a fucking mass shadow, and you're like, "Fuck, what the that? fuck is that?" That's oh, my panther, dude. Don't it's worry. my panther, bro. Um, have you heard cabaret? JT with a dollar ninety nine. Cabaret is that? Isn't that like a wine? Or no, it's cabernet. <laughs> is that a fucking Shaley's old band? Used to be an advice of men. I have never, I've never, I've not heard of it. No. If it's not that, then I don't know what that is. Uh, what does it say? Kevin two five five three with the five dollars. Have y'all ever heard of pale face Swiss? Yes, I have. <laughs> have I heard of it? I wrote the book, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they make some damn good bangers. They're pretty, they're pretty fun. Yeah, I just well recently like last year mm-hmm. started listening to them the, yeah. the video where he's in like the bath of blood the bath of blood and he's just like the death wish folks they yeah. got some cool songs yeah he's heavy heavy stuff. stuff yeah the, the laughing to me is super cringe it ruins a lot of the vibes for me but uh, most of the music is very sick and then there's just the parts where he goes <laughs> and i'm like i get it dude <laughs> you fucked up in the head i hate when ash nico does that too she does like the fake laugh and i'm like i even like ironically i hate this it just it's so it just was like so like like anime kid to me oh, where no. it's like <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for the super chat trap, that's crazy my, my trap card all right, thank you guys for the super chats. We really do appreciate you. If you want to continue to support us in other ways, we do have a Patreon. Link in the description below. I, at least it should be. It's patreon.com slash Dickie Dine Show. Uh, Kevin, if you can put it in chat. Uh, it's pinned. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Um, we have uh, almost 250 over there. We read your messages every day. We interact with you every day. Uh, you get like all of our videos early, and you get stuff like your name on the wall. You get extra perks. Once we hit 250, which we're so close, we're so close. We need like so 20 close. people. We're gonna do. We're gonna release a single. Me and Austin, um, gonna release a banger song. So if you want to help us support, uh, help support us with that, we really appreciate it. And uh, we have, I believe, one more segment for you guys tonight. Kevin, is that correct? We have one more segment. Schmegment. That would be the Facebook segment. Okay, so for this segment, I went to Facebook, facebook.com slash Dickie Dine Show, which you can go on our Facebook and follow us if you want to. If you use Facebook, I feel like most people don't. I, I only do because I, I do this. Um, but if you use Facebook, you can go on our Facebook page, the Dickie Dine Show. You can follow us there. We go there and we ask you questions and we're going to be asking you weekly questions uh the question that i asked you guys uh last week was what does metal need in 2024 we've (laughs) we've got through 2023 Mm -hmm. the year of the sleep token (laughs) uh we got through it we need less cold cuts and the question i want to know from the viewers you what does metal need? What needs to change in metal? What needs to stay the same in metal? What does metal need in 2024? So I have your answers here. I have about 15 answers that I pulled from the Facebook, and I'm going to read them Ooh, right uh, uh, now. Okay. So Dominic Mancini says, get rid of gatekeepers. <coughs> Boo. Sh- get rid of gatekeepers, shit posters. And the kind of people who say X band isn't real metal. Okay, well, okay, okay. One out of three. First two, come on. Now. Okay. And the next person. Wait, hold on. Is that correct? Let me go back here. Nope. This is weird. Okay. The next person says 
more subgenres and gatekeeping. <laughs> Daniel Scherer. Um, so I think we're we're gonna see a pattern here mm-hmm. of of kind of the issue, not just in the metal genre, but the issue maybe with the human race. Mm-hmm. We just can't seem to agree on anything. When there's mm-hmm. one person that says no more gatekeeping, there's one person that says more gatekeeping. Austin, which side of it are you on? See, I'm a pussy, and it's all about it's like a gradient. It's like a spectrum. Like there's, I think there's. Like, people get a fucking community out of gatekeeping people. <laughs> They're like, these are my boys. We don't let nobody into the club. But it's, like, also a silly thing because, like, you can't stop anybody from listening to stuff. So, yeah. like, why even get hung up on that hill, you know? Uh, so, I don't know. I think it's ultimately silly, but also, like, I don't think I don't think people should let it affect them as, as much as they do. Like, I'm being gatekeeped. I'm like, so? Just listen to it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Who fucking cares? Who cares? Like, I can't listen to it now because I'm not welcome to listen. Like, who cares? Do what you do want. It. Do what you want. Uh, and yeah, it was funny that they included shit posting in there. Yeah. Like, what's wrong with shit posting? That's my entire career. Shit posting's hilarious. Shit like, posting. I don't like those. I can't ever I tell think... if they're ironic or not. <laughs> <laughs> I think specifically, maybe they mean like when bands just post memes to get interaction in the analytics. Maybe that's what they mean. Oh yeah. I mean, I've I haven't seen that be an issue in a while. That used to be fucking. That a used problem. to be a massive yeah. issue. I remember that. Uh, I remember yeah. when bands would get hacked and people would do that because it would tank a channel if yeah. you just started spam posting memes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's yeah, brutal. The good old days. Good old days. Gretchen Myers says, going back to the roots. We have to take it back. We got to get back. <laughs> we have to take it back. We got to go back to the future. Yeah, I guess more so than going back to the roots, we I, it would be nice to welcome like a, a new, like a rawness back into things because I feel like I've get a little sick of everything just being so polished and like pretty and it's like so perfect and sometimes i just wish there was like a what the fuck was that it sounded like somebody just crashed like a plate of glass in the background of the guitar track <laughs> like dropping like, plates from disturbed yeah exactly something weird as fuck. yeah it's like is that even like a is that riff even on time but yeah. they're just they're just rocking Led zeppelin? it out led yeah. zeppelin's riffs are always off time i would love a little bit more rawness or like the vocal takes like the that my chemical romance style where he's just like not even like really singing that like the proper way, but there's so much like he's just singing it from his heart. Yeah. I feel like it comes across so much, and it's not somebody just like in the studio trying to look at Melodyne and hit the notes oh, perfectly. Yeah, you know? like, yeah. I wish there was less of that because like everybody can sing now because of the the, the presets that come on fucking Dawes. Yeah, uh, and I just and you can hear it. So it's because it's so easy and it's just it's so accepted. That I hear it so often where somebody's like about to sing and then there's just like a wall of like. Like just forcing notes, and I I wish that was less. And I would just rather you sing the song like a little off, and yeah. like still like feel it more than just yeah. like Robot Man is singing. <laughs> so Jody Wagner says, "Fuck the underground, more mainstream presence." <laughs> okay, yo, Richard. <laughs> Lick the boots. I'm pro boot. <laughs> That's pretty funny. More mainstream. Go more mainstream. I mean, yeah, I guess that's fair because metal could always use a, a hand up in getting popular. Yeah. Because <laughs> it gets popular and then a couple months go by and it's like, damn, that fucking was fast. And then you have yeah. to like, it's like a bubble that you have to keep inflating. Up right. Up, so every time that Stranger mm-hmm. Things has a new season, <laughs> right? <laughs> we'll get, I think uh, we'll get a resurgence of a good Metallica song. I think if Billie Eilish and Bring Me the Horizon collab this year, it'll help. We'll have a couple more years. Yo, I will <laughs> say the though, they're they're doing collabs with like Lil Uzi. Luzi. Luzi, like Bring Me mm-hmm. is massive and they're going they're mm-hmm. kind of getting a little heavier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there is that. Um okay. Dawson Sanford says lower tuning. Lower tuning. Okay, let's How make a do new we one. go lower? Yeah, I think I uh... went <laughs> down to I think it was triple mm-hmm. octave E. The bridge string? Yeah. I think gnarly. it was three octaves down. It was like E zero or like E negative one. Mm-hmm. How do you go? How do you do? What was that? How do you do lower? To be fair, that did go hard as fuck. It did go pretty <laughs> hard. Yeah, that was one of my the coolest. my one regret mm-hmm. from that whole guitar because uh, I gave it away to like a fan uh-huh. was that I didn't actually record like a little EP you did, you did. Yeah, before that giving it away because sometimes I go back and I listen to that song and, and I was like, like, God damn! I was like, and that was back in 2015, right? 
And I was like, dude, I should have just recorded like five or six songs with this thing because they were so ignorant mm-hmm. and it was just so bad. But it like kind of still slapped. And then Steve sure. and I did the Gent 2019 battle with the 20 <clears throat> string guitars that are like And that would have fucking... been sick to pull out as like a wild card. Yeah. A sniper. <laughs> what is that? It's like a sniper rifle. Yeah. It's a one string. <clears throat> it's Or it's a <clears throat> nuke that kills you both. Yeah. <laughs> He's at one HP and you pull out the wild card. Yeah. I like the thought of Stevie T at 1 HP. <laughs> Woozy boy. Barely holding that big ass guitar. So Dawson says lower tuning. Benjamin Husnick says no Husnick. more tuning solo. <laughs> I don't like it. It's too low. It's I, too low. Turn the lights off after 8 p.m. It's too low. Tune bright. it back up. <laughs> You're right. They are just everybody said one person proclaims something and then there's just a guy that's like the opposite. That's what I'm saying. That's the issue with fucking not even just metal. It's everything. Just human race. The human race. You'll never make Let everyone happy. You. So it's like what what does metal need? Uh, it needs this. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It needs the opposite. Of that. I don't like that. Metal. I don't. I don't like that. Which it goes back to what you said of just like. Listen to what you want to listen to. Fucking like what you want to like. Who fucking cares, bruh? The only thing that I will say is it the one thing, the one thing that I would gatekeep more that actually bothers me is when one band or one vocalist or one person Mm -hmm. does something really cool and then the entire scene does it. That one? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Austin. <laughs> Visual representation. Yeah. Yeah. And like, whatever, whatever. But it's just like, let a band have their thing. I don't know. Mm-hmm. There's one thing I will say, and this is the this is the argument that I use. And I'm not even saying I'm right. I'm just saying this is me being grumpy. Is that like <laughs> you have a situation of Led Zeppelin and Greta Van Fleet, right? This is a big one where it's like Greta Van Fleet just stole Led Zeppelin sound, which they maybe it. they fucking did. I don't really care. But the one thing I will say about that is that Led Zeppelin is not performing anymore. They are not, to my knowledge, making music anymore. They are very old and they are very retired. And mm-hmm. so the fact now that there is a band that is continuing that sound, I'm more okay with because the original band is not still doing it. Right. Right. Now, if you have every fucking band doing in the, the deathcore scene. scene doing what now? <laughs> doing the fucking yeah, t- just yeah. Tunnel throat in general has just needs to chill for a second. It's like, can you at least let that band have their time before you rip them off in every? Fucking right. song you and, uh, do. Every algorithm makes me hear a hundred bands trying to do that sound, but not as cool. <laughs> yeah. And once you do something, it's never cool. It's never right, as cool yeah, when it, you do it again. So I saw a band, uh, a band. <laughs> I heard the, just a random metalcore band, and they did an ooh wah ah ah. They just were like, we're just going to scream. <laughs> we're just gonna, ah, yeah, they just did a straight. It wasn't a cover or anything. They're just like, I'm just going to do the ooh ah, ah. <laughs> like, can you do my that? thing. Can you just do that? Can you just do that? <laughs> Are you allowed to do that? <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Okay. Uh, Aaron Provenus says, less quantizing and less production magic, which goes to what you were saying. Mm-hmm. And I will say one thing. We just did the video of cover songs, mm-hmm. right? And... Listening to some of the older ones, I will say, even though some of the newer ones with like the studio magic and the quantizing and the perfect singing, it's like they have their place. Mm -hmm. That's a different type of sound. But when you listen to some of these ones that are done in the 70s and the 80s and even the early 90s, they have this like je ne sais quoi Mm -hmm. that is just like, oh, that's so so good because there's no pitch correction. The singer is, he sounds goofy. He's flat. The guitars are slightly out of tune and they're off time and the drum, the snare sounds like It gives it like a dog shit. It's like a person personality where you're human and it gives yeah a, i think people can like feel the sincerity a little bit yeah. sometimes like even that uh 
What's that fucking song, uh, Neck Deep? Remember that acoustic song they had from back in the day? Yeah. Like, he kind of sings like shit in that song, but he's like <laughs> singing his heart out. Yeah, and you're sure. like, yeah, dude. Like, yeah, yeah sing getting it, man. It. Yeah. Totally getting it. Um, and then Cole Glover says, more drum plugins. <laughs> oh, no. Wait, what, how much more could it get? He literally said, more drum plugins. There's so many. I can't even count how many. Dude. So, like. Like I said, for every person that Was says it? one thing, there's someone that says something else. Um, Hunter Styles says another tour with the Big Four, and by Big Four, Pro Tools, Ableton, Logic, and Cubase. <laughs> I was gonna say I think they're called Project Vengeance now. But <laughs> I see what you're oh, the, the the what is it? The Grumpy Six or something? <laughs> Yeah. The the upset six. The our label said we couldn't have fun six. Yeah, that's so lame. <laughs> um okay, Jay Hodgkinson says we need MySpace and basement recordings back. <laughs> I don't know if we need MySpace yeah, back. Know. That's it. That's going a little that's I, I like on. listen, man, I love your career. I love your spunk, kiddo, but uh I don't know I don't if know we, we need, need fucking you. Sarah Suicide and, Sarah and Suicide. Kathy. Yeah, bring Megan the Horizon. <laughs> May, bring <laughs> Megan the Horizon. I don't know if we need that back. Um, Seth Halstead says more Greystone. See, now we're on. The, now we're talking. Now we're talking. Now we're all on the same Definitely page. need more Greystone. Need more Greystone. Do you can it, confirm if we get if we can lock in a season two Musician Mansion? Do you guys want to see Greystone come back in season two? Don't know. Let us know in the comments if there's a Greystone emoji, maybe a tombstone emoji. Let's see that, and then we'll know that you guys Watch want out. to see Greystone back in season two. Flood the tombstones or hearts if you don't have tombstones. Kyle Rayner says, I personally want more shit that porn stars say before breakdowns. Wait, more? Was there a first one? <laughs> well, I think it's like those like audio clips of like just people saying shit, and then it hits it like early, like... <laughs> Like 2005. Oh, oh, like uh, hit the lights, it's boner time, that type of yes. shit. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yes. Uh, like early 2005 yeah, yeah. core. I'd be down for that. I heard one recently that was a. Uh, it was an oo You heard like, an oo Yeah, it was like right before a breakdown. It was like, no, 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 fucking. What band was that? Uh, Sleep Token? No, fucking. Another one of those bands. <laughs> I don't Just know. Another dude. One of those. Hey, look at all those tombstones in chat. Oh, that there is, are tombstones. That are a lot. See, I, I knew there were tombstones. Look at the, look, look at how many people oh, want to see Greystone for season two. Look at that. Grave Hunter season two. Gra- Grave Hunter. Uh, Gra- Gravestone. Gravy Stone Gravy season Stone. two. Uh, Dalton says people. He wants people to stop hating bands that get popular, like Spirit Box and Sleep Token. I've seen so many people. People say that they can't stand these bands because of how popular they got. When if they gave them a listen, they would realize they're popular because they make good music. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you that you have a kind heart, but that just is never going to happen. <laughs> yeah. just, anything that exists, once it passes a threshold, people will hate on it. It's just like human nature. That's yeah. what, I mean, that's why I can pretty much how Jesus got killed. <laughs> yeah, probably. He got too cool for his own britches. I'm like, we got to kill this guy. This guy's making too much wine. <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, he's, we're, 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 we're he's making all guy. the other guys look bad. He's pretty cool. <laughs> The reason that will never Gotta happen is because of Andrew Nelson. He says, less spirit box and sleep token. <laughs> Don't come at me. I said what I said. Uh, yeah. yeah. So there you go. Fair, yeah, that was literally what we were just talking about. Yeah. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah, there's always someone who has a differing opinion. It's A-X-T-Y. That's the uwu band. I A-X-T-Y I is yeah. the uwu band? Oh, yeah. God. Okay, uh, Chaz Howland says, I would love a channel to be like the old Fuse TV. Amen, what brother. Do? What did Fuse do again? Dude, they had like Headbangers Ball. That's Ooh, how I discovered like I old Headbangers school Ball. OTEP mm-hmm. and like Sepultura. Like they, yeah. dude, the, the late Fuck night yeah. Headbangers Ball on Fuse TV was mm-hmm. so fucking sick. Um, they had Cannibal Corpse. They had all kinds of shit. Free, bro. I was um, super happy to be on Fuse TV mm-hmm. back in the day. But when I tell my daughter and son when they get of age, 
they're not going to give a shit. No, they don't even they're going to go what? what? They're like what YouTube channel is that? <laughs> what, yeah, what do you that dude? Yeah, why you would think that like I don't know, Fuse TV would be a good YouTube channel. You should be like it's like uh it's like being on the blippy of my generation. <laughs> they're like whoa. <laughs> uh, he says play music videos of bands that aren't pop or mainstream or country. A Haven channel for alt music with different shows that match particular taste in the alternative music scene. I mean, you have the Nick Nocturnal channel. <laughs> <laughs> Which is basically that. That, that, that would be kind of cool if a, like Netflix type shit had just like a show that was kind of like they just hosted songs twenty four seven. There's always new yeah. songs rotating through. Yeah, That'd be kind of cool. Just like I don't know, I'm just gonna go to YouTube Radio here. I do wonder. I guess they kind of answer it like they do. I do wonder in today's uh, social media climate. meta, yeah, climate, if. <laughs> A like if a channel like that would be pop because that's the thing is like if it was popular I don't it wouldn't yeah, have gone away make, you couldn't make money either probably is the biggest issue well because of record labels and stuff right. for sure yeah so it's like it went away for a reason and there's no money in it so it's like if you could find a way to mm-hmm. sustain it that would be super ki- uh sick but the problem yes would a hundred thousand percent be mm-hmm. getting like the record labels to allow you to do that. That would be really tough. It would almost um, have to be, it would almost have to be done by like you and Nick and people in like different punk scenes and just done that's, like organically. That's what I mean by the current climate of yeah. social media. So um, Kyle Taylor says more collaboration between popular artists. Yeah, I agree. I have always said this. Yeah. I have always been a advocate for collaboration. Mm-hmm. Um, hence like the, originally the brotherhood songs mm-hmm. like way back when it, yeah. the big shred collabs <laughs> musician mansion it's like yeah. everything that i do is collaborative i love it at worst a couple people aren't stoked at best it's the coolest thing yeah. ever you know yeah it's yeah i feel like there's no downside to it really it's fun if a song pops off and it all of a sudden there's a person that other people like on this cool song they now yeah. like they're like what's going on yeah and it's like tight. yeah and and literally like who fucking gives a shit about those people that are just like shit talking like oh this sucks it's like right, yeah. then go There's away always gonna we be don't make it for that. you we make it for the people who like it like i'm just trolling i'm just trying to trigger people yeah i'm just trying to trigger people that that's that's for sure also what it is 100 percent. but it's like yeah i saw a comment on on the biggest shred collab that someone was like uh so and so was the only player worth watching and I was like, there are 70 yeah, like, there's players. There's no shot you watched this whole thing. And, and said that. if you say that the that one person is the only person worth watching, and it wasn't even someone like popular, it was like probably their boyfriend or something. Right. It was like, if you can watch 70 people and think that that one is the only one worth watching out of like Mateo Mancuso, Scotty LePage, bro, like you don't include those people, you're like... You suck, and I don't want to be your friend. Stop watching my channel. Uh, TJ Huffman. <laughs> I don't be friends with you anymore. TJ Huffman says more ukulele breakdowns. Uh, did I? Was that a Stevie <clears throat> T thing, or did I do that? I don't even remember. Honestly, bro, it might have been Rob Scallon at this point. I think <laughs> I did. I think it was guys. Gen. I think it was Gen 2017. There was one little spot where I played a ukulele and it went into like a breakdown. I think gentle lele. Yeah. I, I mean, I, Rob Scallon might have done that. Definitely sounds like a Rob Scallon thing too. Yeah, I don't know. I think you've used the uke a couple of times before. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Won't be surprised. Wouldn't be surprised. Won't be surprised. <laughs> All right. Well, there you have it. That is what people think metal needs in 2024. Mm. Unfortunately, all of them were differing opinions, <laughs> uh, contrasting opinions. So who knows what this year holds in metal for 2024. I am sure that no matter what it is, Nick Nocturnal will let you know. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Hi, Nick. Love you. Um, So, yeah, that will uh, end the segment of uh, Facebook questions. If you want to be a part of that segment where we grab your answers, you can go and follow us on Facebook. If not, that's totally cool. I know a lot of people don't like Facebook. And I think it's probably one of the most frustrating websites to fucking deal with and try to actually like what? post content on. It's so annoying. Bro, but have you been in the meta space? Wait, what it fucking shit? Actually, I saw like an update on the metaverse. The the metaverse. Metalverse. The metalverse. Hold on. Fuck yes. Finally, a Let's place go, I can truly rock out. Um, 
And it actually looks kind of sick. Like, they look like real fucking people now. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah. They're learning. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to use it. You're sponsored. I'm not going to say that I'm going to use it, but it's coming along. I'm going to hack you on Fortnite. To be fair, if I was putting billions of dollars into something, I would really fucking hope that it would be sick. I agree. Like, really sick. Um, but yeah, so that ends the Facebook segment. You can go uh, follow us on Facebook, The Diggy Dine Show, uh-huh, facebook.com uh-huh. slash Dine Show. Or you and can yeah. go to Patreon and get the Schmegment version where we pull out Our... a suspicious object. Oh, okay. Um, Kevin, uh, can you bring up chat if we have any more super chats? We will uh, make sure that we address those so that we don't miss any of you uh, who are donating the super chats in chat? We really do appreciate all the support that you guys give us. Thank you, um, and thank you so much for being here on our first stream, our first stream, <laughs> uh, our first official stream in this room in these chairs with Kevin. Okay, <laughs> I want to make sure I'm real specific here because we have done a couple uh, streams before, but this is what we're going to do um, from now on. I think we're going to be filming our content live and then clipping up clips for you know the normal videos of course still but then the videos will live on youtube and uh, or sorry the 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 videos will live on youtube and so will the streams the streams will stay up in case you missed it and this has been fun Uh. um we really do appreciate you guys uh let's let's uh wrap it up with reading some more super chats and then we're gonna wish you guys a happy monday and uh go play magic the gathering so uh let's see we have uh what does it say heavy metal Heavy metal brony, yeah, with a five dollars. Who says Dragon Force? Good or nah? Um, I what's that one song? Heart Demolition. That's a really good song. That's a really good song. Uh, yeah, I mean, mad talented people. I think objectively good. Uh, not my favorite genre. But I don't. Yeah. Listen, I just don't listen to that music. You're just not a. You just yeah. Just exactly. Really, yeah, it just doesn't do anything for me. Uh, I mean, guitar, the. Fire and flames, that chorus goes hard, but, yeah. it, but it doesn't. It goes away quick. Yeah, power metal. You're not really that, a power that, that metal guy. Cool, but yeah. yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't hit me right. Yeah, there's definitely some power metal that I think is is super sick, but mm-hmm. I'm not. I, I would like Sabaton's cool. Sabaton's really they're, cool. They're I like, like a little more core though. You. Yeah, a little more like. Um, I don't even know how would you describe it? like historical metal uh, <laughs> historical <laughs> a little more uh slower groovy i guess than like Dah! but um i think dragon force is cool i definitely don't listen to them that often but they have a few good songs 100 mm-hmm. percent um yeah austin is there anything Ooh. else that you would like to say to the uh, viewers the 400 and where are we at now 400 and, is that 16 76 four something i think at one point we like topped 500 which is fucking crazy that's pretty nice 531 let's go dude God damn. for our first stream ever 531 that's yeah, amazing for being here, dude. Y'all. super sick 400 concurrence thank you guys so much damn, for being here we really do appreciate you uh we're trying to give you just a shit ton of content uh we love doing this so we want to keep doing it and uh yeah, if there's anything yeah, yeah. that you guys want to see us do in these future live streams, let us know. We we have a ton of ideas that we are going to be doing, but if there's specific things you think would be really fun uh, for the community, the Dickie Dines community to do, let us know. Uh, either in the comments of this video, once it goes up, in the comments of a future video, whatever. We do check the comments, and um, yeah, we really do appreciate it. We, yeah, we yeah. love you guys a lot. We've been doing this for nine years. Sheesh! Whoa! Long, almost. I do. Ten years drop, coming up. Let's drop a couple more questions in the standard chat. Our ten years is coming up. That is crazy to That's think wild. about. All started from Danny DeVito's underboob. What was the first? <laughs> did, was our first video bad impressions or was it Bean Boozled? I don't remember. Oh man, our first video. I think it was bad impressions. It might or, be being boozled. Or was it being it boozled? Might be, I think it was being boozled. I don't remember. It's so long. And it was like 2014, 2015. That's wild. Yeah, it's crazy, dude. dude Austin playing guitar. It yes. All, it all started with beans, dude. Austin playing guitar, dude. Playing guitar. Yeah, dude. Let's uh teach me that uh that uh per- Polyphia song. <laughs> that Polyphia song. <laughs> that, remember that video where I, I showed you the, the smoke on the water? And you mm-hmm. played the riff. Yeah, that video has like six hundred thousand views. Uh, yeah, it was a, that, that one like broke through the our algorithm. Yeah, it was like went to normie, like well not normie, but like the 
people that don't watch metal content would be like, oh, yeah. what an interesting idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We broke through the wall. Yeah, we could keep teaching Austin how to play guitar if he really wants Dude, to learn. Yeah, cool. And then we Austin could teach me how to do the fucking walrus growl. <laughs> no, the new ones. The fucking. The, <laughs> yeah, the new ones, the, uh, the good Chris Barnes impression. Turn that painting in the back into t-shirts. So we did do that. Funny enough. That was we our first did. and only shirt for a long time. Yes, and we made like 20 copies of that shirt. And I ended up with all of them. <laughs> yeah, they looked awful, dude. They were, like, they were like, we looked like we had jaundice. Yeah, they were like slightly yellow. And yeah, the color was so bad. They were like too and small. Our, yeah, our eyes and our skin were <laughs> yellow. Yeah, dude. It just Jeez. turned out bad. It looked really, it looked like a Ren and Stimpy like, yeah, design. <laughs> for sure. Um, all right, guys. Well, we're going to wrap up the stream for today. Thank, Thank you so you. much for being here. We love, love you guys. You guys. We, appreciate we appreciate you guys. guys. And if you want to continue to support us, you can check us out on Patreon, like I said multiple times in this video. We really do appreciate it, and we will see you in the next one. It will either be, I think we're going to do it again uh, next Monday. We're going to we're try to do it Monday at 5 p.m. PST every, psst, every Monday. Five. Psst. I think that's what we're going to try to do. Um, that will be confirmed soon. But, yes, thank you guys for being here. We really appreciate you. We love you. And, uh, yeah, we're going to clip the videos, send it out to you guys. We're going to post them on our YouTube channel for all of you that weren't here. And for all of you that were here, we love you. Subscribe for more pegging content. Peace be with you. And also with you, the brothers and sisters of Christ. Peace be with... Be... An apple of... A piece of bread a day keeps the witch doctor away. I've heard that. I've ha I have heard that.